Shema! Shabbat Shalom and welcome once again to Light Away Ministries. For those of you who are uh, new, welcome. And we're glad you're here with our Mishpacha to grow and learn with us. For those of you who have been with us, good to see you again. Miss all y'all. But, you know, thank goodness for technology because we can do what? We can go all over the world now. Yes. In a blink of an eye. So, uh, we're here in the city of Orange, 3443 East Chapman. Uh, we're in a salon called Platinum Strands, an odd place, but Father has us here. Uh, we service the community by doing prayer cards and um, prayer and all kinds of stuff. There's been miracles that have taken place here in this very room. We even have it recorded. Um, also, uh, somebody who busted in during a service to, um, <laughs> to express that they had just been healed. So um, we, we've been blessed for these things. And they have been blessed too. So... Um, Today it's going to be a great day. But before I get into that, I'm just really excited right now, to be honest. This this uh, this Melchizedek thing has really uh, been turning my wheels, and I've been getting some interesting insights and revelations uh, this whole week. A uh, couple I may share, or may not. We'll see what the Ruach does first. But how we proceed, for those of you who are new, um, I'm going to be doing the announcements like I'm doing right now. And then we'll, what, uh, we don't do praise and thanksgiving in the beginning. We do it at the end because this is a business. And when we were praising and being thankful, we were a little loud and rambunctious because that's how we get. 
and uh, it was disturbing the business that was being operated out there so with prayer and figuring out how to do this we do it at the end so we get this good meal we eat and then we thank the chef for the meal that was made and so it's a little different um, we're used to it now it's been uh, over a year since we've been doing it that way for, for other people who are new to this uh, sequence of events in a service it may be a little bit different or off or uncomfortable but we have to learn to adjust the things as we need to right that's called religion you can't adjust but father he makes adjustments to things as needed i'll give you one quick example there were some men who said we can't do the pay stock moshi what can we do moshi said i'll be right back he went to father he said hey, father and they can't do it what, what do you want to do do it next month at the same time see there's flexibility within the torah they'll tell you those outside of covenant will tell you that no it isn't flexible but there is forgiveness last night we read about forgiveness in the Torah the flexibility and mercy that's in the Torah so don't believe the hype <laughs> as they used to say back in my day don't believe the hype all right so um where was I oh the announcements so we got uh the continent of india just take a trip over there we're landing in india actually with pastor p we're affiliated with him with the house of yahweh and as i say almost every service we uh help them with sewing machines so that the widows can um be uh self-sufficient and not having to always been offered a fish but can fish on their own so they uh we help them get sewing machines so they can sew and take the goods to the marketplace and they sell them and uh pastor p also has these clinics uh eyes ear nose and throat they do them pr pretty much one at a time they'll do the eyes one day and uh one week the next week they'll do you know uh the ears and uh they do dentistry over there also and so that's been offered um through his ministry we also uh, uh helped them purchase a building several years ago for the orphans and the widows one size for the orphans one size for the widows uh, he also goes out there and he beats the streets literally with microphones uh, proclaiming the gospel old school style throughout the streets and uh, he goes into even Christian churches and they invite him and he teaches them the true name of our Heavenly Father and the true name of his son now, there's a scripture that says do you know the name of the Father and his son and the Tanakh and most don't most don't and actually it's a curse not to know it I don't know if you know that, but it's a curse not to know. He said he would withhold his name and it would be a curse on the people. So, uh, but he's getting that word out there of who he is, uh, who Yahuwah is and who his son Yahushua is and the true way of being delivered. And they're, they're receiving it. So, you know what's interesting? Uh, I was watching um, a study on um, how we got where we are with all the false religion. And most of it comes out of India through the spice trade. And I knew that, and this particular teacher was bringing it back up to my memory. And it's funny that Father is taking us back there where it came out of to disrupt the world. That's where the Trinity came from, that false ideology, that false theology, that false doctrine. That's where a lot of these things came from, were from over there. And now he's sending people back there to correct the wrong. That's awesome. I love it. I just... He always balances skills. So then we have a uh, minister tomorrow out there who's with us, Landaway Ministries International. That's what makes us international is that we have three congregations over there and it's growing. Um, and he's twenty, going on twenty three years old, and he's on fire, boy, for a father. I mean, he's he's about fire. That's that's what his life is about. Period. And taking care of the congregation. And it's, uh, it's just a privilege and honor to be a part of his zeal and his enthusiasm for a uh, father. And for again his people, he he he, he <laughs> literally is putting his life on the line, and that's not even a joke or just a saying. It's for real. I, you know, I was just sharing with somebody out in the salon about him and how uh, you know I I can't relate to that yet. I can't because that doesn't happen here yet. You know, we get a little fussy because somebody doesn't, you know, fusses about scripture and, 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 and what I say scripture means and what they say about scripture means. And we get, you know, that they, they tried to move his whole family into a desolate area. Then two weeks later came back around and said, nah, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna kill you. Well, that's never happened. I don't believe to any of us in this room and maybe you guys out there, I don't believe anybody's been threatened in a very serious manner 
And, you know, we got to praying and Father did what he does. He protects his people. And I knew that was going to happen because he has a lot more work to do and to uh, continue with. So, um, speaking of, he just messaged me right now. So, um, without further ado, we're going to have Sister Jeanette come up. And she's going to be reading Tell Him Williams 92. Um, we do that traditionally every Shabbat. And um, I'm going to move out of her way. So go ahead, Sister Jeanette. Tehillim Psalms 92. It is good to give thanks to Yahuwah and to sing praises to your name most high, to declare your kindness in the morning and your trustworthiness each lila at night, on ten strings and on the harp, to the sounding chorus of the lyre. For you had made me rejoice with your work. O oh, Yahuwah, I shout for joy at the works of your hands. O oh, Yahuwah, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, and a fool does not understand this. When the wrongs spring up like grass, and all the workers of wickedness blossom, it is for them to be destroyed forever. But you, Yahuwah, are on high forever. For look, Yahuwah, oops, for look, your enemies, oh Yahuwah, <laughs> for look, your enemies do perish. All the workers of wickedness are scattered. But you lift up my horn like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil, and my eye looks upon my enemies. My ears hear the evildoers raise up against me. The righteous one flourishes like a palm tree. He grows like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of Yahuwah flourish in the courts of our Elohim. They still bear fruit in old age. They are fresh and green to declare that Yahuwah is straight, my rock, and in him is the lawlessness. To Helene, Psalms 92. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to be talking a lot about that righteousness today. Because we're going to be talking about the king of righteousness. And uh, that particular uh, lineage, that order. Uh, so while, while I'm going through this uh, particular time, let me get a little closer, um, uh, with the Malchizedekian um, series, uh, Brother Garrett is going to be um, not preaching for the time for, for these uh, particular ones until we get through it all. So uh, I will pray and then I'll pray over the prayer cards. I'm going to pray over the, um, the offering and over the service and then we're going to get into the teaching. You guys ready? Okay. Get your thinking caps on. There's some, there's some stuff that has to be erased and some things that have to be added. So let's get to it. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka. I will be reciting the Ten Commandments, Shemot, Exodus 20. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the land of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a cart image or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, Yahuwah, am a jealous El, visited the crookedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing love and commitment to thousands to those who love me and guard my commands. You do not bring the name of Yahuwah your Elohim to naught, for Yahuwah doesn't leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught. Remember the Sabbath day to set it apart. Six days you labor and shall do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah, your Elohim. You do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days Yahuwah created the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. Therefore Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart. Respect your father and your mother, so that your days are prolonged upon the soil which Yahuwah, your Elohim, has given you. You do not murder, you do not bear wedlock, you do not steal, you do not bear false witness, you do not covet your neighbor's house, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or whatever belongs to your neighbor. So let's get to it. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, we lift up your holy name. We are a people who are not afraid, nor are we ashamed. Uh, 
to proclaim who you are and who you are to us and to the world. We are not a people who are scared of letting our light shine in a darkness, in the darkness, in, in a world that becomes irritated, angry, frustrated, um, and says that we are wrong and even uh, almost criminal for following your ways. But Father, we stand firm only because you allow us to stand. You give us the strength to do so. Father, we pray over, ever, over every single prayer card right now, Father. And what we do is we lift them up to Yahusha to give to you to do as you will with them, Father. We know that many, as your word says, we pray amiss. So, Father, we ask that your Ruach, your set-apart spirit, correct the prayers and that you answer them in the way that you see fit. We invite you, we intercede on their behalf, Father, that you enter into their lives and show that you are real, that you are true, so that they can make a, a decision once you have revealed yourself to them to either join you in truth and in righteousness or not to, Father. Then you can enact the proper judgment according to your righteousness. Father, we ask that uh, those who are able to give and do for a cheerful heart who are willing to give offerings into your ministry, um, that you would bless them according to Malachi uh, 3.10. And that you would give them an open heaven and fill up their storehouses so much that they will not be able to contain it all. That they would have to give out and pour out more and be, as you say, a people of a light eye or a generous people who give uh, 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 cheerfully, willfully, without holding back as your Ruach guides us to do so. May, may we be called a people of love and compassion. Father, we also ask that your spirit open our minds and our hearts to your truth, not to be distracted by anything, not even our own thoughts. We bind the enemy from, from speaking and twisting your words and trying to put stuff into our ear. Because we know the enemy can come up into the assembly. He came up into yours. So why couldn't he come up into ours? Well, we, we right now say every scheme and, and every device that he has is put to naught right now. That he can't do that here. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we declare and decree these things. Hallelujah. I have requested for funding for food here in Pakistan, Mishpacha. Here, Pakistan inflation rate too much increase 
every food items are 50 percent prices increase so here too much increase the inflation so please support us help us and do fun for food here in Mishpacham for Pakistan thank you so much love you
they get so excited when I think of all the things you've done for me. Do as you will, you want done with me. Oh yeah, cause I'm tired of fighting. Sometimes it gets hard, I cannot do it alone. Cause I need you, yeah, on my side. You are the light up high to worship you. My knees, all praise to you. All praise to worship you. My knees, all praise to you. I vow to be humble. Yeah, hearken to my sincere supplication. When I'm weak and when I stumble, you are always there to catch me when I fall. You are my rock and salvation. Only one that I can trust, you're my best friend. Whenever I'm in doubt, to you I'll give a shout. With hands held high, I'll be calling on your name. Yeah, I reign. I reign. To worship you Bow down All praise to you All praise to you Up high To worship you To worship you All praise to you I need you I need you Yeah, I need you Yeah, I need you Oh, I need you Oh, I need you Oh, I need you I need you
and I magnify your name humbly. Yeah, I serve you no matter what I do. I will worship you, pray, pray. be to you. Life can be so cruel yeah, yeah. But I know someone That can make it right. right What you gotta do is have a little faith Open up your heart to let him in Even if he can make you free Yeah, you deserve all the praise Be to you be to you, And I magnify your, your name Humbly, yeah, I serve you And no matter what I do Yeah, please guide me. Guide my hands and my voice. Let me sing for you.
You heard the voices cry out way back then Our fathers trusted you And you delivered them We trust you will deliver us again Yahuwah you dwell in the midst of the praises so I, I will worship you There is no one who could come and deliver us all but you So I will worship you Let us all worship you So I, I will worship you So I, I will worship you So I, I, I will worship you
this thing called love Something so simple yet complicated It's got me all up in my emotion Having mystic ways, everything is pagan I had to change my ways I was stuck in a cycle of tradition I was spellbound by the pale face man Now I know better I will love Yahoo With all my heart and soul I am with all my strength And with all my mind I love my hands like I love myself like I love It's the greatest love of all the greatest It's the greatest love of all It's the greatest love of all Still got a chance Yahuwah, he's the final authority So only put your trust in his hands He's the gateway to eternity How I treat my brothers reflects on Yahusha Cause he saw fit He dealt with me, he was long-suffering You gotta stay humble Bless you crumble I thank you for this day Blood, you paid it all for me So I will show mercy To all my brothers and my sisters The way you show me How you love me I, I will love Yahuwah, Yahuwah With all my heart and soul And with all my strength And with all my mind I will love my neighbors like I love myself it's the greatest love of all. It's the greatest love of all. The greatest love of all. The first greatest is to love Yahuwah with all your heart. The second greatest. Is to love your neighbor like you love yourself hey, I, 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 I will love Yahuwah, Yahuwah With all my heart and soul And with all my strength And with all my mind I will love my neighbors like I love myself It's the greatest love of all It's the greatest love of all By Babylon, don't you be afraid, no need to run. Put the armor on because the battle is raging. Don't be led astray by Babylon, don't you be afraid, no need to run. Put the armor on because the battle is raging. Israel, arise, come and take your stand. Let me hold your hand. Israel, arise, follow the commands, light and the lamb, here in the battle cry, here in 
the battle cry And because we have been scattered through the nations Make every effort to demand That we gather and not dwell in isolation And be a fisher of men Look at what Yahuwah has begun Giving you the Torah to overcome Put the armor on because the battle is raging Look at what Yahuwah has begun Giving us the Torah to overcome Put the armor on because the battle is raging Israel arise, come and take your stand Let me hold your hand Cry, Israel, arise, follow the command, the lion and the land, here in the battle cry, here in the battle cry, don't delay, sound the shofar, cause Yahushua is on his way. Salvation is coming, no matter what the wicked say. We will enter the promised land on that glorious day. Sin and death will be destroyed, and everything will be okay. Israel, arise, come and take your stand. Let me hold your hand, here in the battle cry. Israel arise, follow the command, the lion and the lamb, here in the battle cry, Israel arise, come and take your stand, let me hold your hand, here in the battle cry, Israel arise, follow the command, the lion and the lamb, the battle cry, here in 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 the battle cry.
comes in the morning light And I find my way back to you Yes, I find my way back to you Cried out to you as I prayed Father, please have mercy on me today. Help me find my way back to you. I believe the way I'm running back to you. Melecha Olam. Melecha Olam. Find my way back to you. I believe the way I'm running back to you. I worship you as my king, creator of. Now I see the way back to you Your word leads the way I'm running back to you You turn my morning into dancing Your word restores and makes me glad
restore my soul, you restore my soul. Oh, 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 yeah, you restore my soul. Your goodness and mercy shall follow me, it shall follow me. Oh, 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 oh. your goodness and mercy shall follow me, it shall follow me. Whoa, 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 your goodness and mercy shall follow me, it shall follow me. Oh, 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 your goodness and mercy shall follow me, it shall follow me. I will dwell in your house forever, forever, forever. Yahuwah, you are the good shepherd, and you restore my soul, you restore my soul. You restore my soul, you restore my soul. Oh, yeah, you restore my soul. When I'm feeling low, you restore my soul. I already know you restore my soul. Sometimes I just feel blue, and you restore my soul. You make me feel brand new, you restore my in the times I can't go on, you restore my soul. You give me a brand new song, you restore my soul. You restore my soul. You restore my soul. Oh, oh, oh. You restore my soul. Oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs>for those you don't know <laughs> you should know now we are lighting away ministries international um and, and a lot of people ask what what are we about what do we do um you i hear different things coming from you that i've never heard before um so there we go um so i want to give a little brief introductory uh, on who we are we are not christians um, we have come out of Babylon, as Sister Regina loves to say all the time. <laughs> um, we have come out of that, that place that we've been called out of, which is a mixture, a chimera, a, a secretism of many different um, religions and backgrounds to uh, make up something that isn't true, that's misleading the world. We're here as lighting the way. We're lighting his way. It says uh, uh, we are supposed to seek the ancient path. You know, a lot of people don't like old. They, they want to say, oh, it's old and, and this is done away with. Well, we're going to read into that, even some of the scriptures they use to do that. But we're here to light that way, to show that Yahuwah's way is true and that man's way is false. We are uh, 20, uh, first century disciples in the 21st century. What does that mean? You see, I have an iPad. There's a mic in front of me. We're using a camera. There's a, a laptop over there. We got um, um, brothers and sisters across this nation and, and other places that are... Um, going coming through a phone so we love technology we drive cars and we you know there's not candles or torches in here probably be a fire hazard anyway uh, <laughs> so uh that's not it but when it comes to what has been taught first by yahusha through the prophets the writings and the um psalms through that or the prophets writings and psalms yeah we um we are taking that with the explanation and the correction that yahusha came to correct what was what they had mis been misled on and then what the apostles have taught us also so we're going by what they taught at first first century teachings something started to happen in the second century started to go awry something started happening in the third century definitely by mid third century um, things started going way awry 
with uh, Rome putting the edicts that they did and, and grabbing hold of the scriptures and and trying to what get their kingdom in order why because they were turning the world upside down as they knew it back then the Nazarenes were not the Christians they called them Christians in Antioch because that's the only way they could describe them that's the only verbiage they had that's not what they called themselves and those who were in the known like Tertullius in Acts uh, uh, chapter 25 he was he he said you know uh, this man who was the ringleader of the Nazarenes and they said Nazarene it was not it should be Nazarenes um, they knew who they were this sect that he was from so um, and also there's other outer biblical historical facts Epinias is one of them who describes these not serenes they are not Christians nor are they Jews even though they act like it you know so that's who we are in a nutshell we are Nazarenes a Nazarene Nazarene search team well, what does that mean what does that mean we are here searching for our family members who don't know that they are part of this kingdom I didn't in 2007 I had no clue that was part of this Nazarene kingdom a group of watchmen to be a watchman to sound an alarm of warning I, I didn't know that and a, a Nazarene came along and said hey we're supposed to be doing this and that and I went what what are you talking about no we're not that's done away with because I was paganized I was under Babylonian teaching I was Roman Greco within my mind and thought process and he came along and father used this man who has since passed boy if he knew where I was today sometimes I just wish he was alive desire that he was alive so I could tell him look where I'm at today I mean, you were right because I sure thought he was wrong so I'm gonna tell you a quick story he would have the Sabbath um, on the Sabbath he would have people come over to his house and he would invite you over for Sabbath. Well, of course I was going to go over to eat. I didn't know about this Sabbath thing and whatever. He said there was food. So I'm coming over. He said, why don't you, you know, everybody make something. I said, okay, I'm going to make something. So I said, I'm going to make my smothered pork chops. <laughs> His eyes got so big. Uh, 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 no, you can't bring no pork into my house. What? No, they're real good. You love them. We don't, I don't eat pork. And there's no pork in my house. What? Really? Hmm. Okay. So I forgot what else I brought. I don't know if I, I think I bought some ice cream or something. And I remember I was looking around at the food. I got there got to be some pork here somewhere. There wasn't. So I was kind of shocked. So then he brought up again how scriptures talked about that is an abomination to eat pork. And abomination is like the highest disgust that father has. And I said, oh, that's done away with. I said, that's why I love you. I said, that's why I love the Jews, the Muslims, and everybody else who don't eat pork. And he said, why? I said, because that means more for me. <laughs> everybody busted up and laughed because most of everybody in there were Christians. I get home and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kadesh beats me up. Oh, boy, I got a whipping that night. I was in the bathroom brushing my teeth. I look up in the mirror and I heard, don't eat no more pork. What? Wait a minute. What? What? I love pork. It's so delicious. What? Huh? And that was the end of that. To make a long story short, he got me here and now my very being is, is being cleansed from all those impurities and things of that nature. Once, you know, science, dig into science, find out what they say. Okay, you know, some people just go, oh, that, that religious stuff. Okay, fine. Look at science. Look, talk, talk to the culinary world. They'll tell you it's the worst piece of meat ever. It's the worst piece of meat ever for a human being to consume. And a good father would tell his children how to eat. Son, don't eat that. Daughter, eat this. Wouldn't he? So when people say, he doesn't care about what we eat. All we got to do is bless it. Well, bless a piece of poop then. Pray over poop and bless it and eat it. See, you wouldn't do that, would you? If he can cleanse everything through a prayer, then pray over poop and enjoy yourself. No, we're not going to do that, huh? Well, we got real quiet. See, we're not going to do that because that doesn't work. Okay. N and number two, that scripture they, they, they use that food is sanctified through prayer is from their perspective. What is food according to them? Whatever the Torah said was food was according to them. Not everything is food just because people eat it. Spiders are not food. There's people who eat that. Bats are not food. There's people who eat it. Octopus is not food. Even though people eat it. I used to love me some caramari, boy. Fry it up. Ooh, yeah. Dip in that marinara sauce. But no. 
But you know, I really didn't kind of, I did like it, I didn't. It was tough. You know, it wasn't chewy. So we got to eat good stuff now and be he a healthy people. So what we're going to do, um, I'm going to, I'm going to start this almost, I believe every, um, beginning of service, we're going to go over the, 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 the 10 commandments. This is our foundation and we need to know it without it. We can't build our house properly. This is part of the reason why we wear seat seats. What is it for? To remind us of what the 10 commandments. There's something that we need to be continuously reminded of because we go astray so easily. Do we not as a people? Yisrael does. And if you're honest about yourself, it takes you nothing but a second. You could, I'm going to be, I'll be honest with you. I'm praying. And sometimes I get these wrong thoughts during prayer. I go, how could I be praying and get that thought? And it happens because I'm still encasing this flesh of sin. And this thing likes to talk to me in the most inappropriate times. So, Torah of Yahuwah, covenant of kindness, teaching how to love. Let's go to the first one. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Have no other before my face. Now, these are abbreviated portions of it. Second commandment, do not bow to images. Do not worship. Do not have them. And if you read the whole thing, it says don't even make them. Don't carve them. Don't make them. We're not a people who have any type. So wearing crosses or fishes or even, and I see people wearing, um, what do you call it? The, um, the candlestick. Oh my goodness. The Thank you. The menorah. I don't believe that's appropriate. It says, do not have any images. Now it's appropriate to use with in the right setting the right feast day as that. Yes. Outside of that, I don't think we're supposed to be wearing it because scripture says don't have, don't carve anything. In heaven or earth or underneath the earth, right? Okay. Three, do you do not cast the name of Yahuwah your Elohim to ruin. Now, a lot of people say that a lot of translations you're probably familiar with says, do not take his name in vain. What it means is if you have, everybody has a family last name, right? Everybody has a last name. It, it designates what family, what group, what tribe you belong to. And if you act a fool, if you're a thief, if you're an immoral person, you will bring that name to not. You will ruin it. You will destroy it. People will look and go, hmm, maybe you're not such a good group of people or your family isn't the best based off of you. If they, if they only know you, you're bringing your family to not, you're the name to not. So that's what he's saying. If you're taking on my name in this covenant, you cannot bring it to not by your behavior. We behave, act, we talk a certain way. And it's nothing like the nations. It's different. And that's why they don't like us. And they think we are a peculiar, weird, strange people. And we should embrace that. A lot of people don't want to be looked at different. They have a hard time. They're talking about me. Yes, they're supposed to. They're supposed to say... You're different. You're weird. You don't do what we do. That Guess what? The bazaar is getting spread out throughout the nations that way because they're talking about it. Because your behavior is causing that to happen. That's a wonderful thing. Of course, today, remember, keep, uh, remember Sabbath to keep it Kodesh, holy, set apart. Well, we do, we do that. That's easy. The world doesn't think it's easy. They do it a different day. Sabbath is seventh day. In Spanish is Sabado. In other languages, uh, a lot of them, it sounds very similar. To, or and means seven. So, five, respect your father and mother. We got to respect them. Doesn't re it doesn't say respect what? Torah believing fathers and mothers. It doesn't say respect good fathers and mothers. It doesn't say that. It just says respect them. And there's another part to it because he will give you long life. There's a promise to that one. You may be shortening your lifespan if. You are not respecting your father and mother within your heart or outwardly. Six, do not murder. Okay, that, that should be an easy one. Are these things really that hard to do? See, they'll tell you he set this up for us to fail. That's what Christianity teaches. He set these Ten Commandments up so that you will fail. Is that the nature of our Father? To set us up to fail? That's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. No, we're going to read what he actually says in two spots. If, if you don't like what they call the Old Testament, I call it the First Testament. Then I got something in the Renewed Testament, which they call the New Testament, for you too. Okay, that will verify 
what he actually says. Because all scripture is inspired, right? Yahuwah breathe. We all believe that, right? So that must be, it must be inspired. Okay. Do not uh, do not break wedlock. Do you want to know why in your scriptures it reads, do not commit adultery? Thanks to good old King James. Because he wanted to break wedlock. That's why he broke from the Catholic Church. And that's why we have a distorted King James version of the scriptures also. So he put in there, he changed it from not, uh, uh, do not break wedlock to, oh, don't commit adultery. Don't cheat on your wife. No, it's that you don't break wedlock. So that's, that, that's what you have to not do. That's what it says. That's the original. Okay, verse 9. You do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Don't lie against your neighbor. I had a neighbor who did that. He would call the police. He would call the um, he would call the um, city. the city. Thank you. He'd call anybody he could to get his way. He was lying left and right. Okay. Do not covet your neighbor's wife, house, field, servants, animals, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Now, what does that really mean? That means don't want what is his. Again, what does that mean? I can look at a style of house and go, you know, I would like that house. But when I say I want that house, his house, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get it. I may want a wife that's like his wife. She, she, she's, you know, Elohimly like. She's a Proverbs 31 woman. And I go, I would like a wife like that. But when I say I want his wife, that's an issue because that's his. So let us not desire or covet anything that belongs to our neighbor, especially his wife <laughs> or, or husband. It works both ways. I've seen women do that. He's a good man. Hmm. I heard he likes apple pie. His wife don't make apple pie. I'll go ahead and make him some apple pie. Because he's a good man. She don't understand you. Come here. Crown my shoulder, baby. I understand you. A guy. I would, if I was your wife, I would never treat you like that. See, the little seeds drop. He go home, he looking at his wife. Ellen says she wouldn't treat me like that. <laughs> you know, next thing you know. All right, we're not to do those things. Love one another as I have loved you. That's what Yahushua told us. He said he was going to add a commandment. He could. Why? Because he only spoke the words that his father said. So his father must have told him to say that. He was an example to us. Love each other as I have loved you. So that's how they will know that we are his disciples by the love we what show one another a lot of us haven't been shown love we don't know what it looks like the world has distorted it. we think is you know disneyland and princesses and living happily forever ever after and all these things have to happen so father is retraining us and teaching us renewing our minds and the things of messiah so that we can learn what real love is and then learn to demonstrate it and not be scared to because some of us have demonstrated love and we got jacked and so we went, nope, never doing that again. I'm going to be very cautious. Nope, just let it go. It's okay. Father will take care of you. But we have to show love. If we're his people, that's what we have to do. Love Yahuwah with all. Uh, love Yahuwah and love your neighbor. That's what na neighbor. What did I say? Neighbor. Neighbor. That's what these commandments are about. They're about love. Love him, love your neighbor. We need to know these things because we are not good at these things we're selfish because of the sin that's in us we're very selfish and self-centered it's all about me we don't want to be go outside our comfort zone majority of us don't we don't want to put ourselves out for somebody else if you if somebody needs a shirt and that was your last shirt you would struggle but that's my last shirt well then what am i gonna wear what would scripture really say scripture would say give that shirt and let Father take care of you. That's what it really would say. You know, and I'm not saying I'm there either. As I'm ministering to you, I'm ministering to myself. I still have, well, I bought this. This is mine. Scripture says, no, it's not. It's the bodies. And I'm, and I'm learning in that. I'm, I'm, I've been, oh, that's mine, but somebody needs to give it. Just give it. It's okay. It's really okay for this plane. So let's do a little quick recap. The Melchizedek, uh, the priest. One, Melchizedek was a king of Salam uh, and priest of Yahuwah the Most High. He met Abram, Abraham, uh, returning from defeating the kings who captured Lot, and Melchizedek blessed him. Two, Abram gave him a tenth of all the booty. 
First, his name means king of righteousness. He is also king of Salem, with Salam, which means king of peace. And so that's found in Bereshit 14, 18 through 20. Let's read it. And Melchizedek, sovereign of Salam, bought out bread and wine. Now he was um, now he was the priest of the Most High Isle. And he blessed him, talking about Abraham, and he was Abram at the time, and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High Isle, possessor of the heavens and earth, and blessed be the Most High Isle who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Does that word delivered again? He's a deliverer, is he not? And he gave him a tenth of all. Okay, so this is who we're referring to. This is the lineage. And we're going to continue in uh, going back to the future because we got to go back to go forward. Because what was will be again, or is again, actually. There was a temporary situation that took place. Father had to deal with how is he going to reside with his people in a sinful state. So he had to develop a priesthood. And they were chosen, as you, I think, in the first uh, inst installation of this series, were chosen because they sided with Moshe at Mount Sinai when the people uh, uh, decided to worship a golden calf. And Mo Moshe asked, who will stand with Yahuwah, me and Yahuwah? The Levitical priesthood said, okay, or the, the Luites came. They weren't a priesthood yet, and they got blessed for that. What's interesting about that? is what happened before that they were cursed by their father because of their um ways of being they were very violent him and him and simeon his brother were very violent and so they were cursed and the specific curse to luai was that he would have no land in particular and that continued but father restored them to a degree and gave them an honor and privilege but they had to serve the nation so they were still servants they were still, if you think about what's a servant, they had high honor, but they were low at the same time. This is how this works, this servanthood. Because they were the priests, they were all, they were elevated, but what were they doing? They were serving. Their whole life was serving the nation. That's all they did. And they had to also rely on the nation, uh, the nation of Israel to do what? To supply all their needs as they served them. You could almost call that a better welfare system. The welfare system that we got, you ain't got to do nothing. You just lay around, have some babies maybe, and, 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 and then we support you. That system was, they were working on something very serious, but they got supported for that. And they got some good food too, you know. Ugh. Barbecue all the time. That's a beautiful thing. I can eat barbecue all the time too. Anyway. But, right? <laughs> So we're going to get into Hebrews chapter 7, or the Yahudim who are in Mashiach. Now I've been bouncing around from a couple different translations uh, for a reason, because I want to give you guys a wide range of, of, uh, of true ways of expressing this to see it. Um, and then you can pray about which ones are more accurate for you. But So right now we're back in a different translation. One that's a little bit more uh, comprehensive and maybe easier for you guys to digest at this moment. But the subject matter is going to be still deep, wide, and high. It's good. It's good. <laughs> so here we go. Hebrews 7, 1, 2, 3. And we're going to read the whole chapter. We're going to go all the way to 8. We're going to finish both of these out. For this Melchizedek... Sovereign of Salam, a priest of the Most High Elohim, who met Abram, Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the sovereigns and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. This name being translated, indeed, first, Sovereign of Righteousness, these are keys that we need to hold on to, and then also Sovereign of Salam, that is, Sovereign of Peace, without Father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of days, but having been made like the son of Elohim, return, remains a priest for all time. Now all these are what? The title of this actually, and I meant to say in the beginning, excuse me, the characteristics of Melchizedek. Because we need to learn his characteristics and what, 
how do we identify him and who he is today and who he may have been even then also remember he has no beginning or end I am the olive and I am the Tao I am the beginning and the end who, who proclaimed that Yahushua HaMashiach did yes. okay so does that sound familiar to you see these things should click wait a minute who else said that only one other person said that hmm so now we start bringing these things together that's why you gotta know the full counsel of scripture you just can't know the part you like wherever part that may be some people reside in the first testament the first covenant some people reside just in the second covenant some people just love psalms or just love proverbs and they don't read all the psalms because psalms can be very harsh the book of what they wrongfully call James the book of Jacob actually is all from Psalms and that's a harsh book kick you in the teeth so how could he have the Psalms and it be that harsh because you got to read all the Psalms some of it will smack you in the face deservingly so wake you up okay let's continue now, that's right <laughs> Uh, verse 4 through 6 now see how great this one was okay we're going to see because he's going to tell us to whom even the, the ancestor Abraham gave a tenth of the choicest booty and truly those who are of the son of Louis who received the priesthood have a command to receive tithes from the people according to the Torah right the Torah commands that the, na the nation of Israel provide for the, the priesthood Um, that is for their brothers though they have come from the loins of Abraham however the one whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and bless the one who held the promises so Abraham was giving promises right of this great nation yet he submitted himself to this Melchizedek because you only what you only give tithes you only give offerings to somebody greater than yourself verse 7 and 10 and it is beyond all dispute this ain't disputed okay this is something understood who is he speaking to who is his audience why is it of no dispute he's speaking to his fellow brethren the Hebrews this is directly to the Hebrews this isn't the Hebrews that are outside of the dispersion this is the Hebrews that are in Jerusalem okay this is an outsiders these aren't the ones that became like Gentiles and they called them Gentiles, but they were Hebrews who had been out of the nation so long they took on the characteristics, the likes, the, the, the attitudes, the ways of the nations that they were in. You see that happen a lot. So we have, we have many generations here in, in America, right, of people who have come to this nation. The longer you stay here, the more the, the, each, the, the children will be different than their parents who came from whatever, excuse me, wherever country they came from. You, you have Vietnamese first generation come over they're still very Vietnamese right accent may not even change I know somebody from Vietnam they've been here I've known since 1998 accent just as strong as it was the first day I met them I mean we almost in 2020 now their children though don't have an accent but they kind of still have you know some traditional ways that they submit to because of their parent the grandchildren are a lot different they're way more American. And the further down the line you go, the further away they'll be like their homeland, Vietnam. So this is the same thing that happened here. But this isn't the people he's talking to. There's no dispute with them because they know they've been in the land. They understand they're going. He goes, There's no dispute that the lesser is blessed by the greater, by the better. And here it is men here talking about here on earth. It is men who die, who die that receive tithes. The reason why he's bringing this out, hold on, you'll see. He's saying men who die receive tithes. But there, where is there, the Shamayim of the heavens, it is someone of whom it is witness that he lives, and one mighty, uh, and one mighty uh, say, uh, and one mighty say that through Abraham even Louis who received tithes gave tithes for he was still in the loins of his father 
well, Melchizedek met him. So what is that saying? That sounds a little confusing, right? So it's saying Abraham. All right, so let's go back to Adam. When did sin enter into the world? Was it when Hawua, his wife, ate of the fruit? It was not. Says Jennifer shaking her head now. When did it when did it happen? When Adam ate the fruit. Why the seed was in him? She had no seed in her. She holds the seed, but there was no seed in her. So it was in him. When he took it, sin entered the whole world. That's good. Right? Isn't that what the scripture says? Through one man, sin entered the world, and through one man, it was taken away. Yahushua Mashiach, right? So through him, sin entered the world. So now we have, let's go to Abraham. Because we always make these connections. So here he had the seed of the whole nation within him. So even though the Levitical priesthood was in him, through their father Abraham, they offered tithes to one greater than themselves. That's what this is saying. That's good. 11 through 13. Truly then, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, uh-oh, now here's where the Christians will jump in. See? Ah, see? Told you. Right there. But let's continue. I'll explain it. For under it, now this is a change of thought. You see that little line right there? That's a change of thought. For under it, the people were given the Torah. Okay. Did, does that mean all the Torah? Or is he talking specifically in context about the priesthood? We're going to find out if you pay attention and you slow down a little bit and read it correctly and not read it through false doctrine that has been given to us. You will see, not talking about the whole Torah. It's talking about a section of it. We'll continue and you'll see this. Why was there still need for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aharon? Good question. For the priesthood being changed, uh, remember what I taught in the first lesson, the first one? It was changed from what? The Melchizedek one, Melchizedek in one, to the Luwite one. Remember, the first priesthood was Melchizedek. That order it was changed what of necessity remember i brought that up father had to figure out a way that his holy clean presence could be in the presence of filth how do i do this i'm not saying he's sitting up there like how do i do he knew what to do he did it for our sake he's going how do i do this he made a way through this levitical priesthood to cleanse Israel on a regular basis they, had, they were doing sacrifices all day long 24 7 no Sabbath no rest for them because sin was continuously in within Israel they're imperfect people they're people with the sin nature and he can't be there so what happens he uses animals because he's never gonna ask for a human sacrifice well, he did, he did, and I'm going to talk like them right now. They did with the J-Man. No, he didn't. Because he wasn't fully human. That was him. And if he chooses to sacrifice himself, he can do that. So he'll never ask for a human sacrifice. So that's why he got the animals. But what's in blood? Life is in blood, but more specifically, his spirit. So he was still sacrificing himself. Yeah. Think about it. Think about that. Yeah. Okay, he still sacrificed himself through that blood because that his spirit is in those animals to animate them. But it wasn't holding. We'll, we'll read about that. It wasn't it wasn't the perfect way because the animals are a lesser being. Yeah. Okay. So of necessity, there takes place a change of the law. Also, if you notice, it's a little L, it's not big. There's a reason for that. So you got to pay attention to all these little nuances, all these little details. That's why we got to slow down sometimes. We can't go fast. You got to pay attention. Is In context, is it all the Torah or is he talking about the priesthood? We can see he's only talking about the priesthood. He's talking about two priesthoods. He's not talking about the judges and the laws they have. He's not talking about women and their menstruation. He's not talking about if you, if an ox, uh, uh, your ox 
kills a man. Not talking about that. It's not even talking about clean and unclean foods. There's no reference to these things. If, well, I continue to read. You won't see any reference to any of those things. The only reference is these two priesthoods. How one was before. How one out of necessity had to come into play. And how that was always temporary. That was never meant to be the main thing. His goal was to come and sacrifice himself. Why could he only sacrifice himself? You never heard that saying, if you want the job done right, you got to do it yourself. I believe that comes from scripture. That's my conjecture. I believe it comes from scripture because father had to do it himself because there's nobody greater than him. The only person that could get this done was him. Man could never do it. How can a sinful man, all right, how can a prisoner get a prisoner out of prison? Locked up right with you in the same cell. You need somebody on the outside. You need an attorney. Somebody greater than yourself to get you out. But your bunk mate, while you both sitting in jail, I'm going to get you out, man. You can get yourself out first. If I want to see you get yourself out. Then maybe when you get yourself out, you can help me. See, man and others on his own could never get himself out of sin. Impossibility. So he had to do it himself. Okay. For he, I'm in the yellow part right now, for he of whom this is said belongs to another tribe from which no one had attended at the slaughtering place. See, so you may go, what's he talking about? Because you're not the audience. They knew who he was talking about. They knew it was Yahushua Mashiach he was speaking of. They knew he wasn't of the Levitical priesthood. He was of another tribe. And that was the tribe of what? Judah. Right? He's supposed to come out of that tribe, the Mashiach. And he's supposed to reign on that throne of Daud forever and ever. That was a promise given to Daud. That was another covenant. Okay? About the, the uh, priesthood. So the original royal priesthood was the Melchizedekian. King of righteousness. Let's continue. Verse 14. First, it is perfectly clear. Again, there's no debating this. This is clear because of who he's speaking to. Okay, we have to clarify it. They did not. That our master arose from Yehuda. Yehusha rose from Yehuda. A tribe about which Moshe never spoke concerning, spoke, Spock, spoke, I'm, I'm talking old English right now, Spock, uh, spoke uh, concerning the priesthood. He did not. And this is clearer still. So this is even more clear. How, did, how does this book that's so clear <laughs> is this book that's used to make things so unclear? As I was reading this, I was amazed at how Christianity has used this book and has twisted it to where they twisted it to give us a false teaching. Yet, it keeps saying how clear this is. Saying to something else. If another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek who has become not according to the Torah of fleshly command. Oh, see? Not like the Torah of fleshly command. If you notice, there's a little T. And we're going to talk about that. What does Torah mean? It's the instruction. So he's talking about fleshly man instructions. They go by this fleshly Torah right now in Christianity because they have people do what? They go through... I want to go to cemetery school. I mean, seminary school. And, and I want to become a pastor, minister, bishop, priest, whatever. Doesn't matter if you've been called. You're supposed to be chosen by Elohim. Yes, yes. Not because you just want to. Does scripture say you're supposed to have a desire to? And that's a good thing. Absolutely. That It needs to bear witness. Absolutely. But I have known personally of people who just want to go somebody told me that they want to become a pastor why because i think it's cool that was said to me personally and i went you don't even know if you think it's cool and that's what you're getting in for you won't be one for long especially if you do it right if you're a shepherd you won't be doing it for long if you're just maybe a teacher maybe 
but I know of a pastor who parents were trying to continue to force him to be one. He ain't one today. When you're called to be one, you cannot not be one. I'm telling you, you cannot not be one. If, if you, even if there's part of you sitting at night sometimes going, why am I doing this? <laughs> What's going on? Should I even be doing this? And there'll be something wrong you can't stop. You can't stop because Father has commissioned you to do so. You, you know, Jeremy Yahoo, Jeremiah said, I was going to shut up and be quiet, but his word burned in my bones. I couldn't be quiet. He wanted to be because they weren't listening. They hated him. He got thrown into a pit to die. That Ethiopian told the king, hey, now wait a minute. <laughs> you touched the anointed. And he went and saved him. Yeah, he didn't want to do it. Many didn't want to. I forget that prophet who asked, Father, how long do I have to be one? It wasn't a glorious, glamorous thing. He asked, how long? Nobody really wanted to be because it was lonely and they were ostracized because it wasn't the prophecy of today. Oh, Sister Jennifer, I'm prophesying right now that the Lord loves you. I'm speaking like that. And, and you're going to be prosperous. And you're going to have everything you desire. No, you know what real prophecy really is? S Sister Jennifer, I got a word for you. Um, you need to get your act together. Father's watching you right now. You're not too happy. Okay. Go in scripture and see if that's not prophecy. Nine times out of ten, if not ten out of ten. Prophets weren't liked. So... I lost my place. Still clear. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. But not according to the, the, the fleshly command. This is mankind. I got an asterisk there, so I'm going to go into some explanation a little later. But according to the power of an endless life, the power of an endless life, who is the only person we know that has an endless life? Hold that check mark there if you know who he is. For he, capital H E, capital H, does witness. You are a priest forever according to. The order of Melchizedek. Now, who is this he? Let's go back. Now, we're going to talk about something because I have to interject here. I have to go down a little bit of rabbit hole because of things. We go to Romans, Romans 7, 14, the A part. Okay. Because that scripture said fleshly command of the Torah, correct? Christendom, Babylon will tell you that the Torah is fleshly. That is of men. It's earthly. Is that what scripture says? Well, let's read scripture. Romans 17:14a. Romans 7:14a. For we know that the Torah is spiritual. Who said that, by the way? Who wrote Romans? The beloved Paul. So all you Pauliani aliens, aliens, all those who love Paul, brother Saul. He said that. He didn't say it was fleshly. He said it was spiritual. So I don't know where you, those who came up with that doctrine and believe in it, you're not reading all the scripture. Nor are you reading all his words. You're glazing over this part. He says it's spiritual. Okay. Who is this witness that Saul is talking about in Hebrews? Let's go to Tehillim's 110.4. Most of this is, a lot of it is based on Tehillim's 110.4. Comes up a lot in Hebrews. Yahuwah has sworn and does not relent. So this is he who made this witness, Yahuwah himself. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So he's telling the Mashiach, this is your order forever. He placed them there. That's why he's saying it isn't a Torah of flesh. It's spiritual. He's appointed. He's anointed. Yeah. By father. He didn't come up with this idea. And goes oh I want to be the Mashiach. Father said you are the Mashiach. I have designed you and made you for this time. And for this purpose. Okay. All of us are appointed anointed for something. For his kingdom. Doesn't the scripture say that all. Of us. Uh, uh, every joint supplies the body. Yes. Yeah. So you need to find out. And fulfill where you're supposed to be in the body. You might be a toe. But I'm going to tell you something about the toe. Let it not work right. You may not think about it a lot. Oh, it's just a little toe. 
Let it not let it hurt. Let it get swollen. That's all you can think about that little toe hurting. It's not the heart, it's not the lung. But that little toe, oh, 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 oh. Right? And it becomes a really big issue. So don't, don't, don't fuss. Oh, well, I, I want to be this. I should be this. Or I should be that. You should be what Father has designed you to do. And you should work in that. Because it's a complete thing. You got to look at the bigger picture. You got to look at the bigger picture. I'm so glad that I have cells that are cells and microscopic. I'm glad I have veins who are behaving as veins and not trying to be the lungs. I'm glad the liver is functioning the way it's supposed to, not trying to be the kidneys. What a mess would that be? If they were jealous of each other and trying to function as each other, we would be dead. And the body of Messiah could be dead too if we behave in such a manner. We all need to do our part and do it well. Excellence. Because we all know about a faulty heart, right? A faulty heart don't work, the body don't work right. So we all have to do the best we can, but this is the beauty of it all. It's beautiful. We do the best we can, and I'm going to tell you it's going to fall short. Every last one of us. I fall short every day of my calling. I try my best, but I'm not perfect. Yeah. I'm not perfect. Yeah. But the beauty of it is, is that Father goes, but son, I'm watching your intent, and you're for me. You're doing your best, which is limited. Yeah. I'm going to do the rest now that you've done all you could do. Yeah. And it's going to be excellent. And you know what happens? You guys are going to say, I know that's not Derek because he can't do that. It must be Yahuwah blessing him. Oh, all praise to Yahuwah. That's the way it's supposed to work. So I'm glad I'm inadequate. Yes. Because he gets the glory. And that's what I dedicated my life to. That's what it's supposed to be about. Not my glory. And so you can look at me and go, he, look, he talks so well. Oh, look at him up there. Oh, he got congregations out in Pakistan. Oh, he's counseling and, 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 and discipling people all over the nation now. Oh, no. Because <laughs> if it was up to me, you want, you want me to be real honest? Derek F. Cunningham, without Father, wouldn't be doing all that. I'll be working for myself, striving for riches and glory. Okay? That's the real. Because of what he's installed in me, I can't do that. And it's because of what he's doing, you, you may say, wow, what an awesome job he's doing. But it's only because of him. It's not because of me. I, you know what? I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. If you guys could grab hold of this, you would not have so much stress in your life. Don't try to be the one that gets the glory. You can't do it. You'll get limited glory. And you know what you'll get? From man. That's all you'll get. I don't want that from y'all. I'll tell you, don't clap, don't applaud me because you're going to mess up my blessing with Father. I don't want that from you. Because he bless. I'm sorry, he blesses way better than any of y'all. A clap? That's it? After all this hard work? No, no. Don't rob me. Don't rob me. I don't want it. I want what he's going to give me. See, we're too quick to yell out quick. I did this, I did that. Now, I'm not saying in the right heart condition for the right reasons to tell a testimony that glorifies him and not oneself that's different but see that's a heart condition that 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 can build up the the congregation when we do it that way but you know what people can sense within themselves those who are discerning and have the real kind of, you can tell the difference when somebody's sharing and they're sharing to glorify themselves and they're kind of saying well it's for father or when they're really giving Father the glory. You can tell the difference. You, you can hear it in people's prayers. Hear these long, drawn out prayers, and you're like, really? What is being said right now? What, what is being said? Why, why is it so long? Even you should say, don't be saying all these long prayers. He didn't say a bunch of long prayers, did you? Where is it recorded where he said a bunch of long prayers? Nowhere. Nowhere. He didn't. He got to the point. You're healed. Get up. See. Go to the priest and see if you're healed. <laughs> Hold on a minute. <laughs> what do you see? <laughs> oh no, you don't oh you still 
What do you see now? Oh, I see. I mean, it was. It wasn't all these long, drawn out like the, like the father don't know. Okay, I digress a minute. Let's get back. Okay, so the Torah that he's speaking about is men's instructions on how to do things, not fathers. I gave you two witnesses here: Romans seven fourteen and Tehillims one ten four. Okay, the Torah of Yahuwah is spiritual. And it came to us in the natural, so that we could act spiritual in the natural. Okay. Let's go to Yerushia, Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. Now, remember I said hold on to certain words? Right? Melchizedek is what? King of righteousness? Right? Is also, his also name is what? Prince of Peace. Now, we say, well, Melchizedek was a king. Why is he a prince? Perspective. Whose perspective? Yahuwah's. Because he's the king. And he's saying, this is my prince. What do we call that, congregation? What system is that? Suzerain and vassal. The suzerain is the one with the more authority. You see this with Yosef and Pharaoh. Or Paro. Right? The greater blessed the lesser with the authority of the greater. The greater blessed the lesser with the authority of the greater. You see this in the beginning. Bereshit. What was Adam? He was a Melchizedek. He was a king of righteousness. He was supposed to hold order. And if you read the verbiage, he was supposed to rule and reign, subdue everything on this planet. He was a king of righteousness. He lost it. He allowed his wife to convince him somehow, some way, to go against what he was. And then he lost the kingship and had that kingship over to someone else, a spiritual being, Hasatan. And now he is the prince of the air. He is the ruler of this world temporarily. But well, it's coming to an end. And we will be installed because, what does it say in Bereshit 3.15? That there will be enmity between the human sea and the Satan sea. Don't think there's not people walking around that are not human on this planet. I know that's sci-fi-ish. and Yeah, they, see, they, they don't, they don't, Satan has made a system to where he's been given his doctrine now to where now that seems crazy. Derek, you're talking crazy talk. Well, if there's a literal seed, he said seed. And there's a human seed, then there's the opposite of that. Another seed that's not human on this planet. Nephilim. Nephilim. And they keep mating with humans and they start not being as big and not as ugly and Maybe that's why we got certain features that are kind of interesting on this planet. I don't know. I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> but <laughs> So. <laughs> Ooh, Virginia, you're cracking me up. So we have to understand these things and, and be open to everything. That's why I believe the book of Enoch, the Ethiopian one, was removed. Because it would have revealed too much. And I know, I believe that the Roman Catholic Church has other books that would reveal too much. And they've told us not to read. Christianity definitely told us not to read. But if they tell you not to read these outer books that are not in the canon, they, they, tell, they also tell you not to read the Tanakh. Unless you need some comfort in the Psalms and certain ones. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to identify who this, the, 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 the identification markers, some of them, of this Melchizedek. For a child is born unto us, a son is given unto us, and the rule is on his shoulders. The rule. Who rules? A king, a prince. Okay. And his name is called Wonderful. Because he is. Counselor. Don't we see counsel from him? A strong L, strong mighty one. Father of continuity or everlasting father. Prince of peace. Oh. 
Huh. Peace. King of Shalom. King of peace. Of the increase of his rule and peace, there is no end. What does it say about Father's kingdom? It continues with no end, right? Upon the throne of Daud and over and over his reign to establish it and sustain it with the right ruling and with righteousness. What when scripture says righteousness, what is righteousness? See, they read it, and I, I've sat in these these churches and they go righteousness and you go you, you kind of go oh, I kind of know how you're using it but do they really know what it means if you look at righteousness you will end up back at Torah I've done it do your own research you will end up back at Torah because that is what's righteous whose perspective is this written in not mine and not yours it is written in the perspective of Yahuwah the creator of all things and he says what is right is my ways of doing things period I created all this does Ford have a right to say that um, how to use any of their products the way they tell you to is the right way and anything outside of that is wrong yeah. okay why because they're the makers of they're, they're the makers of matter that's just common sense so He's not being, yeah, I'm this mighty one. I can crush you like an ant. So therefore, because I'm so strong and powerful, I'm going to make you do what I say. Ha, ha, ha. That's how they teach you that he is. That's not true. He's saying, I, I, I blessed you with life to be here. And I want you to get everything that I have put here for you that you can enjoy. Six days he created. For who? For himself? For you. For me. And he's saying, to get the best out of it, this is what you got to do. And this is how you do it. And you'll have the best. You couldn't have a better life. Yes. And you know what man says? Yeah, you know, I don't know if I'm going to listen to all that. I got my own ways. I'll figure it out. Thank you, though. Yeah. That's foolishness. That's foolishness. It's weird that we don't do that here, though, do we? We go to colleges to learn from other people. We go to all kinds of classes. For whatever genre or uh, uh, whatever area we want to go into to learn from men how to do things. And then we follow it, don't we? Yeah. We do. And we get degrees and we get certificates and we get recognition and we get prizes and whatever else. But when it comes to the creator, all of a sudden that understanding, that common sense goes... And it flies away with the wind. Rebellion is right. It's witchcraft. Because rebellion is a witchcraft. There's so many people practicing witchcraft, they don't even know it. Yeah. Because they don't got a wand. They're not wearing that hat. And they're not going oogity boogity. And whatever else they do. And they're not killing cats and drinking blood. They think they're not practicing witchcraft. Majority of people are practicing witchcraft all over this planet. Yeah. All over. And sometimes we make a mistake and do it too. Because anytime you don't do his ways, anytime he gives you a word and you say no, anytime you say, I don't feel like it, well, I don't want to, or I'm not interested, and he has spoken to you, you're practicing witchcraft. Yeah. Every single time. Told you it was going to be. Yeah. I told you. I told you. Because that's his word. Okay. To establish it uh, and sustain it with right ruling and with righteousness from now on, even forever. The zeal. That's what that word means. Adore. It means the zeal of Yahuwah of hosts. Or Yahuwah of armies. He has armies. He has the Malachim. Powerful army. Does this. And nobody can stop him. This is going to happen. Okay. So back to Hebrews now. Now that we got some of that understanding of who the king of righteousness is. And the prince of peace. He's all talking about the same person. Yeah. Hebrews 7, 18 through 20. For there is indeed a setting aside of the former command. Okay. In context... Only speaking of the former Levitical part of the Torah, not all of it. We're still in context dealing with the priesthood, not 
thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not break wedlock. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife and house and maid servants, male and female, and all. We're not talking about that. The context is the priesthoods. One was before, and a necessity one need to take place. Because Father was going to dwell with his people. How can he do that? And then, but it wasn't sufficient to cover our sins permanently. So he made a way for our sins to be covered permanently. Where we would never be out of his presence. And he would never be out of ours. Okay. Because of its weakness and unprofitableness, for the Torah perfected not, again, we're talking about the Levitical part of the Torah, but the bringing of a better expectation, they, they uh, uh, translate or transliterate this word as hope, but it doesn't hold a candle. Expectation is the better word to use when translating it. Or in this case, they transliterated hope. So I'm going to teach you the difference between transliteration and translation. Okay. So most of us know, at least here in California, I don't, I don't know the rest of the nation. We have a Vietnamese food that we love. It's called pho. And we spell it P-H-O. Now, that's a Vietnamese noodle soup. In Vietnamese, pho means noodle soup. Okay. But do we say noodle soup? No, we say pho. Because that's what it sounds like in English. And we spell it P-H-O. That's been chosen. P-H-O. Pho. If we would, so that's a transliteration. What it sounds like in a, from one language to another. A translation is a translation of meaning. Okay. So what does pho mean? It means noodle soup. So if, we, if that was a translation, then we would be going to noodle soup places and they would be called noodle soup. Do you see the difference? So in one, the Vietnamese say pho and we spelled it P-H-O and we go, okay. That's what it sounds like in our, without alphabet. That's, what, that's how we're going to spell it. That's what it sounds like. But it's not the definition of what it is. And th that is, the definition is a trans. Relation. So a lot of these words are transliterated. They're not translations of meaning. For instance, in the Greek, if um, if they were truly to trans translate Yahusha's name in Greek, it would be Theososo. That's what would be there, and that's what they would be calling him, Theososo, which means Elohim saves. But they don't call him that. They call him the J name. So it's a trick. So the J name even is a, a nickname that 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 even goes beyond transliteration. That's just something else totally. So, okay. I hope, I hope that's understandable. Okay. Uh, where we're at uh, hope expectation, but the bringing in of a better expectation. So you're talking about the. the the Levitical, the Levitical priesthood, the Louis priesthood had to be changed for something better to come along. It was always designed that way, much like our constitution. The American constitution is designed to change with its people. It's not written in stone. It literally isn't. It's written on paper. <laughs> See, Ten Commandments are written in stone. Interesting. Did they have paper back then? Of course they did. They had papyrus. They could have wrote it on paper. But it was written in stone. Father said, nope, this is forever. And that's why we got it today, written in stone. We know when it's written in stone, that means that's permanent. That's a permanency. We say that today. Through which we draw near to Yahuwah. And it was not without an oath. So there's an oath that's attached to this Melchizedekian lineage and priesthood. Where the Levitical priesthood didn't have an oath. There was no oath given to them. They, they said they were blessed. Moshe said, today you are blessed. It's a blessing that they got to serve in that capacity. And it was a dual-edged blessing. They got part of that curse lifted off of them that their father Yaakov put on them. 
See, Father don't want us to be a cursed people. He really don't. It hurts his heart. It really does. He doesn't want to curse us. He wants to bless us. That's his heart for us. But we have to be in a running for the blessing. But he will spank us to get us to be able to be in a running for blessing. What are you What are you going to do? It's up to you. You know, have you ever seen somebody go, you know, you see two men in particular and they're looking at each other. And one goes, it depends on you how far this goes. And you know what he means. Either this could go away and we could just be quiet and walk away or we could get to fist fighting. It's up to you. I'm going to leave it up to you. How far is this going to go? I'm ready to go the distance. How far is this going to go? <laughs> See, Father's the same way. He's like, how are we going to do this? I love you so much that I cannot. It's not in my nature. I can't let you go. I can't do it. So for my part, I'm going to do everything it takes. And that may mean... Uh-oh. You guys ready? Hold on to your seats. That may mean... He may have to remove some things from you. Yeah. That may mean health. Uh-oh. Did I say that? Yeah. No, scripture says it. Deuteronomy tells us that. There's blessings and curses. If you obey my voice and do, here's the blessings. If you disobey everything that I put on Mitzrayim and even more that I have not written here will fall upon you. And your children. Yeah. Those are not my words. So don't get mad at me. Don't send me emails saying I'm blasphemy. I can read you scripture. Please don't send emails to me saying that was just for Israel. It says he changes not. And you in Christianity love to say that. He's the same today, yesterday come. He has no var uh, shadow of variation. He changes not. How did all that change as soon as you don't like something? As soon as you're uncomfortable, then all of a sudden, well, wait a minute, he changed. Blasphemy. No, we got to own up to who he is and how he is and how he deals with us because you're going to get dealt with that that way if you like it or not. Go ahead and have that false doctrine if you want to, thinking you're comfortable and wondering why your family is a mess, your health is a mess, your, men your mental is a, me is a mess, your spirituality is a mess, your neighborhood, your people, whatever it is, your neighborhood, your governments. You wonder why. And you think this is just happening just because that's the way life is. Because there's so many people who are in that state. You identify with them instead of identifying with covenant people. So who are we supposed to be identifying with? We identify too much with them. See, I'm going to tell you right now. Illness does not belong to me. I rebuke it. That's not my inheritance right. Through Abraham, through Dawid. Through Yahusha, all those covenants are wrapped up in him. And no, because I read scripture. Uh, he's true and he's right. And if that's what dad said, dog God, that's what it is. And that's what it is for me. And I pray and hope that others will grab hold of that truth. Yeah. Like a pit bull lock on, even though their jaws do not lock, but people believe they do. Hallelujah. Lock on and don't let go of that. And don't let the enemy fool you. Well, it's in my family. Yes, I agree with that. It may be. But you, it ends with. When you come into that faith and that understanding, it starts with you and now you don't have to produce it if you are going to have children. It doesn't run into them. You have now freed them. Remember, Father only said something. He said up to the, up to the fourth generation of those who hate me. Right? That's what he said. He didn't say forever because that's not his heart. He's trying to tell you the seriousness of it. It's not an issue. You will affect your lineage up to the fourth generation, possibly. Hallelujah. But he, I noticed the number five. What's the number five mean? The scripture. Grace or mercy. I like that better because mercy has a pity to it. And his hased has a pity to it. See, it's the number of mercy. So that's why he said up to the fourth. Because fifth, he's going to do something. He's going to raise... The fifth. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Five. Fifth. fifth. Okay, generation. He, he is going to raise somebody up to break that curse. He's going to. See? see? And I'm telling you, if you count, I'm pretty sure you're going to find out you're the fifth. 
Okay. I know I'm the fifth. I already counted. I went back and said, and I said, oh, I'm the fifth. And look what's happened. See, that's his love and mercy for us. That's the grace that's attributed to us. He, he doesn't want us. That's why he stopped. Oh, I'm not going to do this. That's why back in Bereshit, he stopped Adam and Hawua from doing what? Getting to that tree of life. Because he didn't want them in that state forever separated from him in sin and all the lineage all of us would have been forever separated and you know how serious it was what did he bring he brought a what what kind of a, a, a spiritual being came down to guard that tree cherubim cherubim depending on the pronunciation now, who, who, what, what office does the cherubim hold? Very high. From my understanding, the highest. They're right there before the throne room. Now, I've come to an understanding through some studying that it is the, the name cherubim or cherubim is a office to hold. As if they're spiritual beings that could become such. So it is it, it very, and that's and those are the ones that are before the throne room of Elohim. They're not all before him all the time, which makes sense. If the earth is a shadow of the things of heaven, the Shamayim, don't we have different levels of things? And we got those. Can we just go up to the president right now? Can you just roll up in there? I won't talk to him. I got McDonald's because he loves McDonald's. <laughs> He might let you in. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you just can't, you got to have an appointment. Who are you? Why? What's your business with him? But there's people who get to see him every day. And nobody asks no questions. They just, they, they walk about because they have that office and that authority to do so. They've been given that. So it makes sense to me. It makes perfect sense to me. If anybody has anything else on that, even if it's something different, please give us a call. I'd love to discuss it and, and see what you got. But that's poor my uh, 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 studying and seeing certain things. Okay. So this is with an oath. This Melchizedekian situation. The other one was not with an oath. It was to, out of necessity, serve a temporary purpose for what's going to come more permanent. Okay. 21 24 the same chapter for they indeed became priests without an oath i said that right without an oath but he yahusha became priest with an oath by him who said to him yahuwah has sworn and shall not regret you are a priest forever according to the order of melchizedek now we're back to what tell one one zero four by as much as this Yahusha, he finally says who he is, has become a guarantor of better of a better covenant. Okay, so now let's talk about that. A better covenant. So does that mean that the first one has to be totally destroyed for there to be a new one? I asked an attorney who was a, who was a friend of mine. And I said, Travis, um, how do you change a contract? What's the least amount you have to do to make a contract new? He said, just change the word A. Is. Wow. That, that's it. You know, if you want to be real simple, is a, just one or two words. And it'll be a brand new contract. Everything else can stay the same. I said, whoa, okay. Because during that time I was studying and, I, and some things were coming to my uh, acknowledgement. Father was uh, giving me revelation. Other teachers were giving me revelation. Yeah, or teachings, which gave me some more revelations of the Ruach was dealing with me and teaching me. And I went, okay, well, that makes sense. The same thing here. We're still only in context talking about one aspect of the Torah, which is the priesthood, which was in the beginning temporary. There was no oath given. It was a blessing, not an oath. Two different things. Can you be oath to get a blessing? Absolutely. 
But that's not what happened there. It was just a blessing. You're blessed today. You're going to serve your brothers. And they're going to take care of you because I, I, I saw that curse that you, Jacob gave y'all. So I'm going to kind of pull y'all out of that. I'm not going to allow your lineage to be. See, that was Louis who was that way. But all his ancestry or all his offspring had to now suffer because of him. And there's something about father from what I see. He goes, mm -hmm. I just can't let this go on forever. That was way back then. Let me rectify that now. Let's see if I can get them to. See, he's wonderful. He, he, he's, see, when they say the most horrible things, that ups, it upsets me. When they say he was cruel, cruel and mean in the, in the Old Testament, talking like them. And then the J-Man came and straightened him out. They put him over the father. Well, that's no surprising. They put Mary over him, too. Not surprising. Not surprising. By as much as this Yahusha has become a guarantee, this is a guarantee of a better covenant, going back to the original priesthood, okay, who mediates to the Father on our behalf. I don't have to make sure I got a lamb that's perfect. Because if you made a mistake, you were you could die. And if the Luites didn't catch it, they were in trouble. You were in trouble. It was a mess. When I go before Yahusha, I don't have to have that stress of worrying if it's acceptable. Thank you. This is a better, this is a better uh, a way of doing it. Thank you. I don't have to have, see, he knew we were going to be in a dispersion. How many of us got sheep? How many of us got lambs? How many of us got goats? How many of us got bulls? We only have chickens. Okay? Don't got a rooster. We may have some cats and dogs, but they're unclean. You can't sacrifice them. And if you do, what's going to happen? The neighbor's going to call the police and come get you. Derek's in the backyard sacrificing dogs. So he knew this wasn't going to work. See, there's a bigger picture he's looking at the whole time. We need to see his bigger picture. He was prepared and was preparing everything for us so that we still could be able to come before. Because that's how much he loves us. They're going to be in the dispersion. I got to disperse them. Because of their, 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 dis, their disobedience. I still love them. But see, there's another trick too. He knew we were going to intermingle out there. Because what happens when other people get with other people? They say, ooh. Hmm. I ain't never seen a woman look like you. I'm, I'm used to my people, but you, you look different. I really like that. Ooh, I've never seen a man look like him. Ooh, just <laughs> Wow, that's different. I, I want to get to know you a little better. And next thing you know, they start intermarrying. Didn't he tell Abraham? Didn't he give him a promise? He said, look at the sand. That's how your descendants will be. Where is sand? Sand is everywhere, even the bottom of the ocean. You can't count. He said, look at the stars. That's what your descendants would be like. They give an estimate of what they think how many stars are. They don't really know. It's an estimate. You can't count them all. So how are we going to do that with one group of people? Yeah, See, he had to spread us out. He had to do that. Did he do that about a uh, Tower of Babel? He spread them out. It wasn't meant for man to stay in one place. So actually, it's really genius. Because he says in the end, every tribe, tongue, and creed will come before him and praise him. This is my conjecture. But I think it's really strong in scripture. That everyone that has that inkling to come to him has Hebrew blood in them, literally. It's funny how now they got all this DNA testing and how many people are finding out, Brother Garrett, that they have Hebrew blood in them. Yeah, mine didn't come. <laughs> mine came and then was greatly regretted. Yes, <laughs> by somebody in his family. But, <laughs> but he rejoices. I find it interesting that my relatives, for some reason, called me and my sister the Jewish kids. There was something about us. My mom told, uh, my, my aunt told me because of how we were and how we acted. They said, you act like Jewish kids. 
We were different. Me and my sister were different than the rest of our family. For some reason. I always had an affinity for the Hebrews. I didn't realize it until my mom called me up several years ago asking me about, oh, do you know this? And I go, why are you asking me? Don't you have people that... I was just curious. And she goes, oh, my, remember my girlfriend so-and-so? And I was like, yeah, I remember her. Because the reason why I remember her because her husband had stabbed her in, the, in her backside with, uh, with, with some scissors. And my, mom, and my mom got off the phone with her and laughed so hard and told me when I was about eight or nine years old. And I just stuck, oh, he stuck her in the, and I knew him. So I said, ooh, he didn't go to jail for it. But anyway, so I said, oh, yeah, I remember her. She said, yeah. She said, you, always, you knew everything about the Jews, as they call them. And I went, wow, it was even then. I think there's a reason. And I know in the Ruach, I was told that I'm from the tribe of Judah or Yehuda. So either way, I know I have an affinity for him. There's something in me. I believe that's his genius. He done sprayed everybody out in the world, the Hebrews, so that we can have that in us so that he could claim us. Ah, uh, 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 Hasatan, you can't touch that one. Look, go take a deeper look. <laughs> you got him too? Ugh. And the only way he can the only way he can get us, remember, you can't curse what Father has blessed. His people are blessed. Even in Father spanking us, we're still a blessed people. Even in dispersion, we're still blessed because it glorifies him. How are we to show those we're with to come aboard and be with him? Well, what's the purpose? If we sit just like them, it serves no purpose. If we pour just like them, it serves no purpose. If we just is stressed out and our hair fall out just like them, why should I be with your Elohim, you say he's so great, but I look at you, and my life is better than yours. See, that sure is no purpose. That doesn't glorify him. But Derek, you already said that he lets us go through things. Absolutely. But it's not for always. He lets you go through stuff to show them that when you're with him, no matter what's going on, when he lifts that off of you, and you rejoice through it, you never had a bad attitude the whole time. And then they see how you get lifted up after that. They're going to say, there's something to that. Remember Yob. Remember Yob. What happened with him? He didn't necessarily do anything wrong. He didn't. Everything was taken from him to prove a point. Yeah. See, we signed up for this. Yeah. This is what we signed up for. To be used in any way, fashion, or form he desires. We have given of our own free will to be in this covenant. But with a knowing. Now this is where we get tripped up. We sit there and start pitying ourselves. Especially when we're in uh, distress or turmoil. And then we start saying, why me? Why am I going through this? Even Yob did that. Did he not? He lost perspective. See, in scripture, see, we have too much now. There's no excuse. Unless you're not reading your word, which is still no excuse because you're supposed to be. Okay? So you should be in your word and you should have this knowing. It's all over scripture. Knowing. Knowing why. It produces patience. It gives the character of Yahushua. It's renewing your mind. Every stressor that we go through, why do we work out? It stresses the body and it adapts to it and it becomes stronger. If you get through emotional turmoil, right, and you get through it the right way, it makes you stronger for the next time that happens. Is that not true? It, why do they claim that vaccination works? Because they're supposed to give you that so your body fights it and becomes stronger. Well, we know real vaccination is getting outside and letting kids play in the dirt. That's the real vaccination. We don't need no vaccinations. We got to let them play in the dirt. Stop, stop paralleling everything. The Swedish did a study back in the 90s wondering why there was so much asthma in the United States. You know what they found out? They said because we kill all the bacteria with all this Perel and wiping down everything all the time. Oh, Purell. Purell, yeah. How you were saying that, I'm like, it wasn't, it wasn't connecting. Oh, well, now it did. Hallelujah. Purell. Purell. I'm like, Purell, I'm like, this, that's almost this one letter short of a tire. Pirelli. Oh, I don't I, see. I don't know that that didn't connect. <laughs> I guess it depends on what you know, what you don't know, what will connect. So, like the saying goes, 
and I'm gonna say it the correct way. Elohim made dirt so dirt don't hurt. <laughs> you, we're made from the dirt. Right, we're made from the dirt. Okay, so th that's the real thing. So, okay. Um, he became priest with an oath by him who said to him, Yahuwah has sworn and shall not regret. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. By as much as this Yahuwah has become a guarantee of a better covenant, going back to the original priesthood who uh, mediates to the Father on our behalf. And indeed, those that became priests were many. Garrett, how many did you did you calculate were the uh, Levitical priesthood? How many there had to have been? Because they, they did shifts. I think there was Eighteen thousand or so, and they and they did they did shifts, so not all of them were in the temple at one eighteen thousand priests in the temple. <laughs> yeah, that that wouldn't work. That's, they'd be like sardines, so they would do shifts. That's why when you see Johannan's uh, father, right, he was in the temple. His the lottery had come up, and then his turn to go in into the most holy. Not all of them got to go into the most holy. And he happened, they could die, never have gone and served that particular time frame, uh, that particular uh, uh, service. Okay. And indeed, those that became priests were many because they were prevented by death from continuing. That's the other thing, too. They died. So somebody had to take their place. This is why priests can marry. This whole thing that priests can't marry is an abomination. I, I, I'm going to say it's an abomination. Father doesn't say it. But it's definitely not scriptural. And you wonder why they're touching little boys. Hmm. But he became, but he, because he remains forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. See, we don't have to worry about nothing. You know what? Dude, don't you hate it when you have a great boss and they leave and you go, oh, wait, wait a minute, where are you going? Oh, well, I'm going out of state. I got a better offer. And then you end up with some turkey. And you're like, man. But that happens here on earth because people change jobs. People die. People retire. Whatever the reason may be. You know, you may have a favorite governor or, or, or a favorite president or a favorite senator or a favorite teacher or a favorite principal. And then they they leave wherever it's at. And you go, man, that fa that favorite the, your favorite waitress at a restaurant. That's happened to me several times. Where did they go? They were awesome. Well, oh, they got married and they had a baby and they're not working no more. Oh well, good for them. Sad for me. But we don't have to worry about that with Yahusha. Well, let's continue to read more about it. Twenty five, twenty seven. Therefore, because of all these things that were before it. He is also able to deliver completely. See, the other priesthood could not deliver completely. He is able to deliver completely those who draw near to Yahuwah through him. And ever living to make intercessory for them. Now, the reason why I put born again now a little thing you'll see it in a minute when it comes back because it says he does innocent he makes intercessory for them it says ever living to make intercessory for them right so are we born again now if we're born again in our perfect state he don't need to make intercessory what's intercessory for what's the only purpose of intercessory on our behalf because we mess up and sin so we're in, we're in the running to be born again we put our application in to run again. We even been through orientation. This is part of some of that orientation right now. So that we may be chosen to be born again. He's allowed, he's adopted this body of sin. Scripture says that. And has made a way where he could live inside of us through the blood of Yahushua. He made a way for what? The earthly temple the physical temple now we are the fleshly temple and through the blood of Yahushua because we're covered in it his spirit can reside there now in us we're not born again 
And I'm going to prove that even more as we go along. And it's going to mess Christianity up. It's going to throw a bunch of their doctrines out the window. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest. It was fitting. Change your thought. Here we go. Because he's what? Kind. He was innocent. He was undefiled. Having been separated from sinners. Set apart. Kodesh. Kadosh. And exalted above the heavens. Who does not need. As those high priests. The Levitical priesthood. To offer up a slaughter offering day by day. First. For his own sins. See that's not necessary. And then for those of the people. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. So now we don't have to go through that repetitive messy. It was messy. Think about it. Blood on here. Cutting this. Cutting that. It was messy. It, 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 was, it, it wasn't the most ideal. It got the job done. You might even say, if I may, and I don't want to cause any offense to anybody. Maybe we could say it was a cruder way of doing it compared to now in comparison. Now, I would t if that's all we had, I'll take it. But he's giving us something greater. Something that's a lot cleaner. Yes. It's more excellent. It's better for everybody. It's better for him, too. No matter where we are, we can call on our high priest. We don't have to take a trip. See, some of them lived way out, far away from Jerusalem. They had to take a long trip to get there. Father even says in scripture, if you live so far away, don't lug all that stuff with you. Bring the money. Sell, sell, sell your, your, your lamb, your goat, your, your whatever you were going to come to sacrifice. Get the money for it. Come to Jerusalem. Buy it off of somebody and do it then. That way. Because of how burdensome it was. And now we got, in, in this part, they do have truth. It is an easier way. This is better. This is better, absolutely. Let's continue. Verse 28. For the Torah appoints as high priests men who have weakness. Because the word of the oath which came after the Torah, this oath came after. In context, again, I'm re-emphasizing this. Because some of us still have, some of us in here, some of you out there, are still have that meshed into your very DNA that the Torah has been done away with and this Hebrews is talking about all the Torah. It is not. It's specifically in context again. Have we talked about clean unclean foods? No, we have it. Not once has it come up. Have we talked about anything else that the Torah speaks on except for the priesthood? This is all it's talking about. Yet they took it and said, it means all of it. See, again, we believe Brother Saul wrote this. He's speaking to the Hebrews in Jerusalem. They are not non-practicing. They understand. They've been keeping it to the best of their understanding. They're not like the ones who were out in other places who lost a lot of those traditions. Not man-made. I'm talking about the traditions of Yahuwah. So he's speaking to them because they know. You know, with, I, I, I watch a lot of my Mexican brothers and sisters. You know, when they get together, they speak a certain way. And sometimes they'll click right into Spanish. Sometimes it's Spanish and English. And you would be like, what are you saying? What? And you're bouncing around because they're bouncing around back and forth between English and Spanish. And they're saying certain things. I remember one time I was with Felipe. And I was like, they busted up laughing. They laughed so hard. I said, I want to laugh too. What y'all, what did you guys say? Oh, in English, you wouldn't understand. It's not funny in English. So I go, just tell me. He told me, and I went, yeah, that's not funny. It didn't even make sense. But there's a cultural context that was that I didn't understand. Because later on, I asked his son, and he went to a whole explanation of the joke. There was a cultural context I had no idea about. And the joke couldn't tell me. Because I don't know. They had to explain that to me first. So, But they knew it, and he wasn't speaking to me. He was speaking to his people. Yeah. And that's why they busted up laugh. And I sat there going, dirt, dirt, dirt. You know, I, I would laugh too. 
you know so this is the same thing here he's not explaining because he don't have to it is our due diligence to go in and figure out in their context what's being said what's being understood by the audience he's speaking to archaeologists do this all the time this is simple this is what academia does but when it comes to scripture all of a sudden all this intelligence all this common sense flies out the window I've never seen it happen so atrociously with anything else than with scripture. So he's not talking about the whole Torah. He's talking about the priesthood part. Appoints the sons having son having been perfected, uh, having been perfected forever. Let me read that again. So, is it, but the word of the oath which came after the Torah appoints the son, having been perfected forever, and. What did we learn that he, how did he become perfected? He, he became perfected through learning obedience. Whoa, that's what scripture says. So Yahusha had to learn obedience. Wow, does that kind of blow your mind? But wait a minute. He was without sin, but he never lived on this planet like a man. He never had to be tempted in every single way that we did. See, I, I was thinking about Brother Tamar and his situation where he, he, he does this under threat of his life. I'm not doing it under threat of my life at this point. So there's a difference. Now I wonder sometimes, honestly, I think, what would I really do if I was in his shoes? I would like to say, and I really believe I would stand firm. But you know what? When, when you hear and it's up to your temple. Unless you're not really prepared mentally for that day, you don't know what you'll do. Now, I know Father has dealt with me years ago about persecution. And if somebody, and I remember, he would give, boy, he would, I was having dreams. I was like, man, I won't have these dreams. But he was building me up to something. We have to get ready for that. We think the persecution is somebody going, I don't like what you're saying. You get, I'm a nerd. Shut up. And we all been persecuted. No, I ain't, no, you just, no, no. Just having a bad day. You just having a bad day and somebody, you know, just yelled at you and you should pray for them anyway. And they don't know no better. Real persecution is when you, you get kicked, spit, thrown in jail for your belief system. The real persecution is coming. We haven't, we don't even know what it's like, especially here in this country. We really don't know. We just get, we hear some people on a talk show or whatever, and they disagree with the truth of the word. We get a little bent out of shape. That's nothing. What's really to come? Whew. We better get ready. We better prepare ourselves. We better act like we in the military, knowing that we will go to that type of war someday, at some time, and be prepared and ready. This is this is what this is all about. Now we're getting to chapter eight. Okay, let's keep going. One through three. Now the summary of what we are saying is this: We have such a high priest. Who is seated at the right hand of the throne of Yahuwah in the heavens? Who and who serves in the set apart place and of the true tent which Yahuwah set up and not man? See, what anything man sets up will come to an end. There's people who say, and I just heard somebody say this, America is never coming to an end. I just heard that right now from a Christian. It has to for the simple fact there's a thousand year reign coming and only Father's reign is going to be here. It's not going to be called the United States. <laughs> All right, that alone. For if indeed he were on earth, he would not be a priest. So, I went, wait a minute. He can't be a priest on earth because there's the saying that he will come, he will sit in Jerusalem here on earth and he will rule from there. But it says he can't. So I had to go, wait a minute. Oh, he's going to be in New Jerusalem with his bride. And he's going to rule from there as Melchizedek. Because it says the sun does not illuminate New Jerusalem. The sun, S-U-N. But that the sun, S-O-N, is the illumination of New Jerusalem. So I went, aha. Got it. See how we have to, certain things we got to fine tune. Because we still got that Babylonian 
twisted doctrine in us. I did. And this it, going through this, I went, wait a minute. Because I always felt someone's a little bit wrong with it, but I didn't know why. So, something's a little off about that. No, he doesn't come back to the physical New Jerusalem. He comes back to New Jerusalem, which is above New Jerusalem, where his bride resides with him. We have our own space and place special with our husband. It's a wonderful thing. Since there are priests who offer up gifts according to the Torah, who serve a copy of the shadow of the heavenlies, as Moshe was warned when he was about to make the tent. For he said, see that, and that's Yahuwah, for he said, see that you make all, you know, that's one of my favorite words, all you can eat, all, okay, all, according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. He's talking about Mount Sinai. But now, he has attained a more excellent service inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant. Okay, I had to say it again. In context, only speaking of the former Levitical priest uh, uh, part of the Torah. Priesthood of the Torah. That's all he's talking about. This is where we've been. We haven't shifted lanes at all. Nothing else has been added in. It didn't say food, unclean and then clean food. It didn't say anything else. We're still talking about, haven't we? I've been reading, right? The scriptures. And we've only been about the priesthood, right? Okay. No other subject matter. The two priesthoods. Which was constituted on better promises. Tehillim 19.7a. The Torah, the Torah of Yahuwah is perfect, bringing back the being. Why did I put that there? Well, because I want to prove that scripture says that it's not a curse. It's not done away with. His plan wasn't to get rid of the Torah, just the priesthood part that wasn't supposed to be there. But wasn't the original plan in the first place. Because we know that Aharon was added in. Moshe was supposed to be a priest king. Aharon was not a king. He was a priest. See, it was supposed to be Moshe, and Moshe because of his unwillingness. And that's the only prophet I've ever seen Father get angry with. And that and, and he's one of the greatest ones. But he's the only one he got angry with. And the only one I've seen he tried to kill. That's the scripture too. He tried to kill him. Now that tells me how high Moshe must have been. It says he never spoke to any man face to face like Moshe. Panim, pan, panim. So he was at a high order. So when Moshe messed up, there was a higher punishment for him. He didn't even make it into the promised land. Much given, much required. Exactly. Much given is much required. See, so we, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. If Father has called us to do something, do it. You may miss out. Now, did Moshe miss out on everything? No, but there's portions he did miss out. He had to look up on a, on a mountain and look over at the land. I almost felt a part of that. Well, kind of, I don't know. It felt a little, I don't know. Like, I'd rather not see it. If I ain't going, I don't want to see it either. <laughs> he had to just. And he was, right? <laughs> and he was mad in Deuteronomy. Debraim, because of you, Yahuwah would let me in the land. He was upset. Deuteronomy, you could read his anger. And he had to put up with these wayward, stiff-necked people. And none of them made it in except for Yahushua and Caleb. And that was it, yes. So, if you don't like the fact that I went to the First Testament or what you may call the Old Testament, well, I got something for you in the New Testament. You ready? Hold on your seats. Cause I know your pastors probably have not taught you this. They probably just bypass this part because it identifies something they don't want to identify. Well, here we go. Timotheos, Allah, First Timothy, well, uh, 1, 5 through 11. Now, the goal of this command is love from a clean heart, from a good conscience, and a sincere belief, which some... Having missed the goal, I hope nobody here and nobody out there is in this place, but if you are examining yourself and correct that, that you still have time. If you're breathing and he hasn't come, you still got time. Okay. Turn aside to senseless talk 
wishing to be teachers of Torah, understand neither what they say nor concerning what they strongly affirm. There's an issue. And I see it all over Facebook. I see it everywhere. All over social media. These the Why did Yahushua not start to teach until the age he was? Because they didn't allow people to teach until they were a certain age and a certain understanding. There's a maturity that has to be there. Knowledge does not denote maturity. It just denotes knowledge. Life experience too, right? Life experience also. This is something, especially in our society, we don't get. We believe because we have Google, and I can Google something so quickly and get the answer. You don't have the answer. You don't even know it. And Google isn't always correct, as we know. I had a client who was a nurse who put something on Wikipedia that was wrong when Wikipedia first came out. And she sat there and laughed about it. And I said, are you going to change that? She said, no. Me and my friends are laughing about it. You may not know what's being put up there if it's accurate. You have to do your due diligence. Knowledge does not denote maturity. Two different things. So you got these people out here teaching, wanting to be glorified that they know so much. Because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. Most people who want to be glorified, guess what their issue is? Low self-esteem. Because when you're when you don't have low self esteem, you don't need to be glorified. You don't need to, you don't need people to say you did a good job. You don't need people to you don't because you're secure in what you're doing. That's good. That's good. So most people who want glory, they they have low self esteem, and that's what they should be focused on, building up that low self esteem and learning what Yahuwah has called them to be, instead of trying to steal His glory from Him. And then trying to say you're really giving it to them. When you're really trying to get it for yourself to boast yourself up. I see it's all over Facebook. Majority of people who are on Facebook shouldn't be teaching. I say that plainly. I say that out loud. Please challenge me. I have no problems with that. You haven't even gone through the correct system that scripture says to go through. Come on. Okay, you're supposed to be in a congregation. Hey, I'm not talking about cemetery school, anything like that. I'm talking about you're in a congregation, you're serving. And the people of the congregation recognize you as a teacher, leader. Then the elders go, yes, he or she is a teacher, leader. And it shouldn't be that there's any really she's involved. Do you know why there's she's involved? Because there are not enough men who are going to stand up and do it. The way it's supposed to be, the men are supposed to be leading. Not oppressing, not fleecing the flock. I'm talking about true servant leadership. And you see on Facebook people serving themselves. How are they really serving others? They're just gallivanting around going, I know this and I know that and I know this. Who are they serving? Who are they really serving? That's why you see fights on Facebook and you don't see discussions. That's why there's debates. That's Greco-Roman. There's no debating in scripture. How can you debate? Because you know what debate is? And I hear Christians say this a lot. Unfortunately, I hear it with us. I'm going to debate. No, debating is I'm going to push my viewpoint on you and I have to crush you and I gotta be right no matter what. Does that sound like scripture? See, I'm not here to promote my side. I have no side. I'm just sharing scripture with you. That's all I've done. You have to take it up with the Father if you don't want to deal with it or don't believe it, whatever. It's not a, not a fight with me. These aren't my words. I'm choosing to follow what he says. There should never be fighting over the word. At least not from your point of view. You should be at peace. Because what happens when you're fighting or arguing or debating yeah. or causing strife? What does scripture say? Every foul spirit is present. So now you have just entered into a, a, an arena where you have invited every foul spirit underneath the guise of I'm going to teach this person something. Or prove that I'm right. 
Because you say that my belief, the way I believe, is wrong. How does that work? See, it doesn't. We have allowed the world to influence us, and we're not influencing the world. Okay. And we know that the Torah is good if one uses it legitimately. Now, who wrote this? Is it? Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on, let me think about it. Paul? Saul? Did he write this to Timothy? A young elder in the congregation? Yes, he did. I thought he said the Torah was done away with. Huh. Let's continue to read. Knowing this. Here's that word knowing. What are we supposed to know? The Torah is not laid down for the righteous being. But for the lawless and unruly, for the wicked and the sinners, for the wrongdoers and profane, for those who kill their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for those who whore, for sodomites, for kidnappers. I thought that was interesting. They had a kidnapping problem back then too. Okay. For liars, for perjurers, and for whatever. Perjurers, that's interesting. Those who go into a courtroom and choose to lie. And for whatever else that is contrary to sound teaching according to the esteem of the good news of the blessed Yahuwah which was entrusted to me. So now this is what Christians are going to say. See, it's not for me. I'm born again. I'm righteous, holy, sanctified. Come on. But they're eating pork, which is an abomination. But they're celebrating Christmas. Which is whoring. Wait, let me see. Is whoring in here? Let me just take away. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, there it is. The word whoring is, is right there. Huh. Uh, is it wrongdoing? Yes. Is it sin? Yes. Is it lawless and unruly? Absolutely. It's all those things. So, guess what? The Torah is for you. And at some degrees, in some ways, some of this will hit one of us. Because we're not perfect. We're going to fall short. The Torah is for me. I'm not perfect. See, we think we're better than what we are. So, oh, that's not for me. I believe in him. I trust in him. Wonderful. He says you need it. You need it. We haven't arrived yet. We have not arrived. One day we will. The Art of Slow Reading by Thomas Nor Newkirk. New Newkirk. To read slowly is to maintain an intimate relationship with the writer. To read slowly is to maintain an intimate relationship with a writer. The scriptures is written by who? Yahuwah through his spirit, right? Yeah. So we need to slow down. If we would slow down and not rush through. You know, you know I don't date. You know scripture isn't dating. But imagine being on a date because many of us have. I have dated in the past. All of us have dated. To, most of us have dated. Um, <laughs> hallelujah. There's one person who has it. You're blessed. Trust me, you're blessed. Um <laughs> And imagine, for the females, imagine a man rushing through a date. Terrible. You, right, terrible. terrible. You would, right? And you can tell he's just trying to get through it. Well, how would you feel? He's interested in you. He's not. Oh, here, get the check. Wait, hold on. Yeah, get the food back. All right, all right check, please. All right, bye. Well, here's me. Huh? It's an insult. Sorry. <laughs> so imagine us getting, you know, oh, let me hear if we get wake more. Dear Heavenly Father, you know, bless you. Hallelujah. Okay, let me read a quick scripture. I gotta hear it because I gotta do it. Right? So let me read. Okay, now I'm going into my day. I got it done so I can tell everybody I read scripture and I prayed today. And as uh, Sister Regina. Stated, I believe her words are exact. It's an insult to him. 
to rush through his word and to rush him. I don't believe he's pleased with that. And then we make mistakes and we don't catch things. He wants to speak with us. He wants intimate time. Sister Jeanette wants to spend so much time with her husband. Oh, she can't. She doesn't get to spend a lot of time. But when she does, it's precious to her. And I can see the look on her face. So I get to see Jeanette's face and how she looks. Where anything is going to disrupt that intimate time with her. She, it's the same look every time. She, she goes... Uh, and you see her trying to figure out quick how whatever else is coming up can be done away with so she can spend that time with her husband. This is how we should feel with Father. So I'm going to continue. If we are uh, uh, to respond to a reader, we must be responsible. Isn't that interesting? You must be responsible. We commit ourselves to following the unfolding of an idea, to hear a text, to attend to language, to question, to visualize scenes. It means paying attention to the decisions of uh, uh, decisions a writer makes. Now, I don't know what you guys do when you read, but I'm telling you, I've done this since I was a kid. When, I, when I've read the scriptures, I always, I can see it. I see it. I see them at the base of the mountain. I see what I believe my imagination allows me to see with the thunder and the lightning and the sound of the shofar and how the people trembled. And, and, and sometimes I do silly stuff in my mind. They fall on the floor and, and roll around because they were so scared. Okay, I, I, okay, that's me. But I have always visualized. I've always gotten so in depth into it. It's just how I work personally. And I, I will share with you this. If that's not you, pray that it is you. Pray that you learn to do that. Because Father wants you to be with him. He wants you to have that intimacy. When I read this, I went, wow. And the Ruach guided me to this particular quote. Because I wasn't really looking for it. And there it was, boom. And it kind of flashed at me. And I went, oh, okay. Wow, all right, want me to use that? That's really good. Because that's how we should be reading scripture. That's what it should be to us. As much as you have, or maybe still do, depending on who you are at your point in your wall, as much as you love video games, as much as you love movies and know every actor and actress's name, as much as you love the genre of music that you enjoy, and you know every DJ, you know every words to the song, you know every beat, you know where the beat came from, if they sampled it, if it's sports, I know people who know everything about that particular player, when they started, their stats, their who they married, who they divorced, who they cheated on while they were married. They know everything. All their three and four and ten kids about other women. They don't they know every detail. Now, if man can do that with that, this is how we should be, and not even more and even more so with scripture. Would not we agree? Okay, I, I hope so. Remember, Father's watching. You ain't agreeing? Well, that's between you and Father. Then you just told him, nah, you're not that big of a deal to me. <laughs> Slow reading. Rule number one, be patient. Patience is huge. We want everything quick, fast. I know, even myself, there's certain things I want. I want things to hurry up. You know, we live in an era of time of not being patient fast food fast cars we don't want we definitely don't want no red lights who here wants to be stop at a red light don't you want just green lights let's be honest we all want green lights nobody wants a red light i want the autobahn See, he, garrett wants the autobahn because he wants to go a certain speed too he wants to go fast and no red lights you like stopping at red lights Okay, well, gear's different. Most people don't like red lights. They want green. They want to get to their destination and get back. So rule number one, be patient. Cultivating patience is the most important of the rules. The one, uh, the one from which, uh, the rule slow, uh, uh, slow reading, the one from which all the others follow. Patience is needed to develop our reading skills, which are also more broadly our cognitive and imaginative powers. This 
does what? It exercises your brain. It exercises your brain. I'm going to tell you something, Kodashim. Fellow priest kings in train. Don't continue to read your scriptures from your electronic devices. I, I'm going to tell you my personal experience. There's something that blocks. I'm telling you it does. Then when I get my paper scriptures and read it, there's something about these lights that block it. So you've experienced it also. Okay, so, so it's bearing witness. Please, please get your paper scriptures out because they can change a scripture on you very slightly. You may not even notice it. They may remove something and add something and you wouldn't know. They can do it in a second on an electronic device. Your paper is what you have. What's the first thing that a, a destructive entity does? They want to get rid of books. So they can give you whatever they want to teach you. And you have no reference. What's the first thing they do also when another country takes over another country? They kill all the intellectuals off first. Why do you think that is? Because they know the truth. And if they say something different, the intellectual is going to say, no, that's not true. So they kill them off first. And the ignorant, not saying that in a mean way. I'm ignorant to a lot of things. But those who are ignorant, then you can teach them whatever you want to teach them. And they will not know any better. Part of patience is working steadily at the technique we need to read well. That's why Father says read all the time. He's trying. If you have problems with comprehension, if you feel you can't read right, please be diligent in reading. Pray for Father to help you with that. He will. He already told us some of it. Now, this is man speaking. He said, read my word. Sometimes he doesn't tell us exactly why. He just says, obey. And we need to know that everything he tells us is for our benefit. Now, here's a practical benefit of reading your word slowly. Now, why did I put those two in? Because we need to read slowly this next part. We need to read this slowly. Let's not go through this too quick. Chapter 8, 7, and 9. For if the first covenant had been faultless. Okay, what did I keep saying the first covenant we're talking about? Christianity is going to say, see... The Old Testament, see, it doesn't work. It, it, it's not faultless. I just read where it was perfect. Didn't I read that to you? So now that's conflicting with Scripture. And this is where people will say Scripture is contradictory. No, it's not. It never is. Man's way of presenting it or man's interpretation of it is what's contradictory. Scripture is not. Then no place would have been sought for a second. See, we need the new one. The old one, kick it. Throw it in the trash can. For finding fault with them, okay, did not find it faultless. The covenant, the first covenant, had, had not been faultless. What is a covenant? Let's slow down. A covenant is a contract between two people or two entities. When does a contract become faulty? When one defaults on it. It could be either in men, in mankind, it could be either or or one party. In this case, that covenant became faultless or not uh, was not faultless because one of the entities that were in the contract defaulted on it. Let's continue. For finding fault with them. Who? Yisrael. We know how many times they messed up. I, I brought the golden calf. 40 days later. Don't carve any image of heaven or earth or above. Don't worship it. Don't do nothing with it. Uh, we, we don't know what happened to that fella up in that mountain. So disrespectful. Listen to that even that fella. His name is Moshe. He, father used him. He's anointed of Yahuwah. This fella that's up. And we don't know what happened to him. Probably dead. Why don't you create uh, uh, some some Elohim for us to, to that we can say let us out of there? Oh, give me your gold and, and out came this calf, as Aharon would tell it. It says that he carved it. He carved it and made it into a calf. Okay, so they messed up many times. They kept breaking it, and grace and mercy kept being applied. 
And he kept trying to get them, this wayward wife of his, to stay at home and be with her husband. And stop whoring around. Stop being an adulterer. Stop breaking wedlock. Thousands of years he's dealing with her. When she, when he, when he, when, uh, he says, See, the day is coming, says you, when I shall conclude with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda a renewed covenant. Well, Derek, that's what I'm talking about. See, Mr. Christianity is looking at me going, Yes! Okay, let's continue, Mr. Christianity. Not according to the covenant that I had made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Mitzrayim because they did not continue in my covenant. That was the fault right there. That's why that covenant didn't work. Not because that Yahuwah's covenant was bad. Not that his Ten Commandments plus weren't perfect. Man was not upholding it. I know. That's why he made to show us that we couldn't do it. And that's why he brought the J-Man. So that we, he did it for us. Is that so? We'll see in a moment. I thought... Because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says Yahuwah. 8, 10, and 3. Because, because this is the covenant that I shall make with the house of Yisrael uh, after those days, says Yahuwah. Giving. Oh, they must have missed this part. Giving my laws, or Torah, in their mind. Wait a minute. This is a curse that was done away with, and Yahusha did it for us. But he's giving his law in their minds and shall write them in their hearts. He's going to write a curse in their minds and he's going to put it in their hearts. That's what Christianity says by default. It's a curse. So it's done away with. But I read here in the word that he's going to take that Torah the 10 plus and he's going to put it what he shall write it uh, uh, the law in their minds and he shall write it on their hearts their very soul both of those are referring to the soul the very fabric of who I truly am not this flesh I happen to be in this body he chose this body for me for his purposes who I really am is inside this body which one day will be removed and put into a glorified body hallelujah I know I'm ready for that I hope y'all are too and I shall be their Elohim and they shall be my people they shall by no means teach one another his neighbor and each one his brother saying no Yahuwah because they all one of my favorite words shall that's a second word I love right know we're supposed to be knowing stuff me that day I look forward to this will go away one day won't need this won't need this I can't wait for me not to have to be up here. Because you guys will all know him intimately. There'll be no need. You know the, the, the saying preaching to the choir, that's what would happen. We'll just glorify him together in all our personal relationships with him. Oh, I look forward to that day. For the least, excuse me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. Because I shall forgive their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawlessness. I shall no longer remember by saying renewed he has made the first old now what has become old and growing aged is near disappearing so yes one has gone but what did I tell you before what happened he changed one aspect of it right and one aspect was the priesthood that's going away there's another aspect that's going to be changed He's going to, it's not going to be outward, it's going to be in us. We won't have to crack open scriptures anymore for the sake of getting his word. It'll be in us. It'll be there. Just like sin has resided in us. Do we have to go searching for sin? Uh -uh. It's already there. It's sitting in you right now, ready to be activated. It's ready. You know what? Some of you out there and some of you in here may have already sinned inside you right now. Could have been doing it half the time, the whole time, at least once during this time. Very possible because sin is always there waiting to spring out. Even if it's a thought, it's there. And now imagine the flip side of that. 
righteousness is always there. You can only do good. You can never do wrong. Oh, hallelujah. I can't wait for that day. I'm tired. I don't know about y'all. I'm tired. I'm tired of the fight. I'll keep fighting. I'm not going to stop. But man, it's worrisome. I know the word for what I know it. And I know some of my thoughts. I know most of my thoughts. And they're not, they don't add up to the word. And I'm tired of that. I'm tired. I'm, I thank goodness there's a way. I got, I got my, what? My Melchizedek who mediates on my behalf. He has to because of the state I'm in at this moment. Born again? Absolutely not. In the process of getting there? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. So now we're going to go to uh, <laughs> Shemot Exodus 19, 3 through 8. And Moshe went up to Elohim, and Yahuwah called to him from the mountain, saying, Now, what we're going to get to it, is the law too hard? Okay. Is it too hard, as they say? Is it impossible? That's why he did it, to show us we couldn't do it. Well, let's see what he says. That's what they say. Let's see what he says. This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob and declare to the children of Yisrael. Look at the two differences. One is genetic. The, 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 the descendants, the Hebrews by blood. And then you have those who are grafted in Yisrael. Okay. Is, uh, uh, I, I, would this be comparison? Let me know if this is comparison. It's like the Native American. And then those who are immigrants here who have become Americans. Would that be a good... I know that kind of sounds a little shaky to me for some reason. Uh, yeah, I think just the concept of it just is shaky. Wait, 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 explain. Because the immigrants came and destroyed the Americans. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, I get that. But they're the real Americans, which they're really not Americans because they were called something. Yeah. So, yeah, let's just X that one out. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw that one in the trash can. Edit that one out. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that didn't really work. Okay. This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, genetic, and declare to the children of Israel, those who decided to change their residency and become part of Israel under Yahuwah. You have seen what I did to the Misrites and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. And now, if you diligently obey, see, not half doing it, not kind of doing it, putting all your effort into it. Can you say that you're putting all your effort into following Yahuwah? Because that's what he requires. Can you honestly say you are? If not, make the correction. Okay. If you diligently obey my voice and shall guard my commands, my covenant, excuse me, then you shall be my treasure possession above all the peoples. For all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a reign of what? Priest. Reign means rule. So that's a king or priest or a prince, a reign of priest and a set apart nation. Those are the words which you are to speak to the children of Israel. And Moshe came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words which Yahuwah commanded him. So he came to the elders, told them, and they went out and told all their people. So Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, Moshe spoke to the elders, the elders went and spoke to the people. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yahoo has spoken, we shall do. This is the problem. They defaulted on what they agreed on in the contract. That's why the covenant was faulty. Not because of Yahuwah, because they didn't live up to it. Okay. So Moshe brought back the words to of the people to Yahuwah. Let's continue. 24-7, Shemot, 
And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that Yahuwah has spoken, we shall do and obey. Did they do that? No, they defaulted on the contract. Does that mean the contract wasn't good? Does that mean the covenant was faulty? No. If you're in a contract with anybody, your car contract, your lease, or if you're whatever, your loan, whatever you have, if you default, doesn't mean that that contract was faulty. It means you defaulted. It means you didn't hold up to your end. See how this is faulty reasoning. And if you just slow down a minute, read the word, and use some logic, you would go, oh, that doesn't make sense. What Christianity, what Babylon has been teaching me all these years does not make sense according to scripture. It actually doesn't even make sense according to what goes on here on, on this natural plane of existence. Yahu 11, 10 through 11. They have turned back to the crookedness of their forefathers who refused to hear my words. What, what did he say in Deuteronomy? Deborah, if you diligently hear my word. And what that means in the Hebrew is this. Not only are you hearing, you're listening, shma, you're listening, you're obeying, and you're doing. So your life is a representative of what you're listening and obeying. And people will say, oh, okay, you follow this. But they refused. And they have gone after other mighty ones to serve them. They're serving them now in this wicked season. They're dressing up. They're eating candy. They're partying. And they're knowingly and or unknowingly worshiping partaking in wickedness of another mighty one, a lesser mighty one. The house of Israel, Yisrael and the house of Yehuda have broken my covenant I made with their fathers. They broke it. Never did he say, oh, that covenant was just horrible. You know, I messed up. I, I didn't make it good enough. That's not what Yehuda, that's how they say it. That he purposely did that. Can father purposely do Anything that's not a quality. Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, and, and, and Gary over there said no. And he's right. Let me tell you something else. When he disciplines you. And you're going through that. It's perfect. Think about it. Everything he does is perfect. It's perfectly yeah. done for you. And you may be saying man I'm going through it. Yeah because you're being disobedient. He per perfectly is disciplining you. To get you back into the race. For everlasting life. And that's his mercy and his love for you. It says he has hased. Hased is loving commitment. He's committed to you. And your everlasting life for you to be with him. And he's perfectly going to execute that correction. That's why in Proverbs it tells us that a wise man loves correction. A fool despises it. A wise man will take correction and become the wiser. The fool will scorn it. Okay. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah, See, I am bringing evil dysfunction on them which they are unable to escape. Then they shall cry out to me, but I shall not listen to them. You don't want to be in that place. Oops. Continue verse 12, 13, same chapter. And the cities of Yehuda, Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall go and cry out to their to the mighty ones, to them, uh, to whom they burn incense, but they shall bring no deliverance to them at all in the time of their evil. For your mighty ones have become as many as your cities, O Yehuda, and you have set up as many slaughtering places to shame as there are streets in Jerusalem, slaughter places to burn incense to Baal. What's that word in English or in Hebrew? Baal. Capital L O R D. Capital L O R D. And they replaced our father's name with the name of a lesser mighty one, which represents Hasatan. 
and call on it all the time. Words are important. Oh, he knows what I'm saying. Words are important. Yes. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. What comes out your mouth. What you call on. You know, if I keep calling Garrett uh, uh, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. He most likely, he's going to look at me like, who are you calling? And I'm looking, are you calling me, Joe? He's going to trip up. My name is Garrett. My name is not Joe. See, we don't like to be called different names except for the name that we have that have been given to us or what we'll accept. We may have some nicknames that we accept. You could call me this. But if you call me outside of any of those names, they don't have to be curse words. But if you call me the wrong name, call me Jan and see how happy I'll be. I will not be happy if you call me Jan for a lot of reasons. Number one, I'm not a female. So why do we put it on Father? Well, he knows. He doesn't care. When he says it all over the place, he does. Yes. Yep. He didn't say, call me whatever you want. That is my name. Proclaims, that is my name. He doesn't say that. He says, my name is Yahuwah. That is my name. He, he didn't say to Moshe, just tell the people to call me wherever they want. He proclaimed who he was. By name. Names are important. They have meaning. Absolutely. Debraim. Now we're going to get to something. Because, again, what did Hebrews, the book of Hebrews teach us? Through, through this new priesthood that we're going to get a what? A renewed covenant. Not like the ones before. And how was it not like the one before? There's, there's two aspects of it. One. The priesthood is changing back to the original priesthood. Malchizedekian priesthood. Okay. Um, two. The Torah, the instructions of life, are going to be in our minds and written on our hearts. This doctrine, this false doctrine that Yahushua did all for us so we don't have to do it, which doesn't even make sense. I mean, every time I say it, I go, how does that make sense to people? And it's too hard. He set it up on purpose so that we would fail. Isn't that horrible? That's horrible. Well, let's read what Debarim says. That's what man says. Debarim 30.11. For this commandment I am commanding you today. Uh-oh, you ready? It is not hard for you. Nor is it far off. Is there a contradiction between this doctrine that is hard? Yes. And guess who's wrong, man? Christianity is wrong. Babylon is wrong. Those of you who proclaim these things, you're wrong. Sorry, it's right here. I'm judging righteously by scripture because these aren't my words. Okay. This isn't my interpretation. I'll read it again. You can read it from your scriptures. I'll read it again. For this commandment, well, let, me, let me start from the beginning. Deborah in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 11. For this command which I am commanding you today it is not hard for you, nor is it far off. Okay, but I know a lot of you don't like the, the Old Testament. It's going away. I read it, right? That covenant is fading. It's old. Okay, wonderful. I, I'm, I'm going to ride with you there. But let's go where you feel comfortable. But you're going to get uncomfortable in just a moment. Let's go to Johanna and Olive, 1 John 5, 2 and 3. One of my favorite scriptures. But this we know. Uh-oh, there's that word no again. See, I told you, no, knowing is all through scripture. We saw we're supposed to know. But this we know, that we love the children of Elohim. Excuse me. But this we know that we love the children of Elohim when we love Elohim and guard his commandments. This is how you show love for him is by guarding. That's his love language. Obedience. To what? His word. His instructions. For this is the love of Elohim. That we guard his commandments. And, are you ready? Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> <laughs> and his commands are not heavy. Or in some translations, most likely in, in if you're using uh, King James, it's going to say not burdensome. 
Some say not hard to do. Where do these pastors, bishops, 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 ministers, and the like miss this and don't teach their congregation this? Because they've been taught through cemetery school a dead word. And therefore, what fruits are produced through this dead word? Death. And you see it all in the church. They themselves are saying the church is dead. It ain't working. Things aren't right. The church is a mess. It's chaotic. They themselves say it. Because they're teaching a dead word. It's not life. It's not truth. What did Yahushua tell the woman at the well? He's looking for a people that will worship him in what? Spirit. And? Spirit. Come on. Are they doing that? No. So it's a dead word and it produces death. This word is alive. And it will produce everlasting life if you grab hold of it. So see how they, so you got to take all the scripture and put the council together, not make a false doctrine off of a couple of things and you want to promote something because you're disobedient and you're what? Lawless. What does scripture say about lawless people? Who's supposed to be coming? The lawless one. If you are lawless, if you have no Torah, you underneath him, the lawless one, you'll go right to him because it'll be what you already been practicing. And it'll make sense to you and you'll run right to, oh yeah, he's my leader. Because you're already lawless. Because his system has taught you to be lawless. You can look at Christianity, Babylon, as a forerunner for the Antichrist. Or let me say it more correctly, excuse me, for the uh, replacement Messiah. That's more accurate. It's a, it's a forerunner. Just like Yohanan the Immerser was a forerunner for Yahuwah. He paved the way for him to come. Well, Satan will do the same thing on the other side. So he has a whole system that has been paving the way for his replacement Messiah. And they will follow him when he comes. All right, let's go back to Yeremiah 31, 35 to 37. Thus says Yahuwah, who gives the sun of light by day and the laws of the moon and the stars of the light by night, who stares up the sea and his waves roar. Yahuwah of hosts is his name. See, not anything. If these laws vanish from before me. Now he's talking about the laws of context. What's the context? The laws of the sun giving light. The laws of the moon giving light. The laws of the stars giving light by night with the moon. The laws of the sea and the waves roaring. Those are all laws. If these laws vanish from before me because you hear it, then the seed of Yisrael shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus says Yahuwah, if the heavens above could be measured and the fountains of the earth searched out beneath, I would also cast off the seed of Yisrael for all that they have done, declares Yahuwah. We know that's impossible, right? So what is he saying? I'm not going to do that. But that's very interesting language. Does that pique anybody's understanding or connects to another scripture? Well, let's go to Manyahu 5, 17 through 19, because as soon as I read that, I go, wait a minute. That sounds very familiar to me. And then I went, oh, this is one. This, this, I, this has to be here. Thank you, Ruach. Do not think that I've come to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to complete or fulfill. That word there means to fully teach. It doesn't mean when a car is completed off the line, the assembly line, is it done away with? It's not usable anymore. Mm -hmm. See, that doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. When something is complete, made whole, or fulfilled, your order is filled. That don't mean you ain't got an order. It's complete here. Now you can take it. That's what this means. By their context and their understanding. It's complete. It's full. 
He's going to fully teach it. Use that with, the, with Amazon. Be like, your, your order has been fulfilled. You're not getting it. <laughs> right? That, oh, that means you're not going to get it? You'd be mad. It's because they already got your money. I can tell you that. <laughs> you're going to be a little uptight. <laughs> For truly I say to you, listen to this verbiage. Pay attention to this verbiage. Till the heavens and earth pass away. One yod or tittle shall by no means pass from the Torah till all is done. Has all been done. All has not been done. Thousand year reign ain't here. I haven't been transformed into my glorified body. Then we miss something. If you listen to Babylon, if you listen to Christianity, it'll have you missing stuff. Okay. And then you won't follow right and then you're going to miss it in the end. You've already missed it and you're going to miss it. They got you coming and going. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so. Uh oh, listen. Christianity, Babylon, pay attention. Shall be called least in the reign of the heavens. But whoever does, the, whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the reign of the heavens. He said it right there. Now, the... Who, who, who is the name above all names? Can anybody tell me? Yahusha. Yahusha has been risen the name above all names. Is Saul the name above all names? No. Oh, okay. So who am I going to listen to? Uh, thank you. And if something doesn't sound right that Paul is saying or Saul is saying, I got to default to Yahusha if there is a conflict. If there is a discrepancy. But you know what I know? So we'll never make a discrepancy. That's man's interpretation of his words. And brother Kepha warned us of it. That this would happen. Be careful with brother Saul's words. He said even he had a hard time with him. Because of his knowledge of who he was. And then what father brought him into. The combination of the two was amazing. Yeah. We would consider him a professor. You know, one of the great professors or great doctors yeah. of our time. He would be he would be highly like, wow, this guy has this knowledge. So now we're gonna go back to the foundation. Because this is about what? What is this really all about? His instructions to us. This is about our structure. So here we go again. One, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, have no other. Uh, uh, before my face. No other Elohim before his face. Two, do not bow to images. Don't carve them. Don't make them. Anything in heaven, on earth, or in the earth. Three, do not cast the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim, to ruin. If you are with him, if you are in covenant, don't default on the contract as Yitzrael of old did. Four, remember the Sabbath and keep it set apart. Keep it holy. Five, respect your father and your mother. And there's a promise to that long life. Don't cut your life short. Six, do not murder. Seven, do not break wedlock. It's not about adultery and cheating. You don't do that either because that does break wedlock. But more specifically, it's about divorce. Why? What is a marriage? A covenant. So how do you think he feels about covenant? Let your yes mean yes. Let your no mean no. There is a, uh, uh, is a Proverbs or a Psalms that says, uh, keep your word even if it hurts. Even if it hurts. So when people say, well, he doesn't want me to be unhappy. I'm unhappy in this marriage. He goes, stick it out. Obey me. I'll bless you. Don't worry about that. And I'll take care of him or her. You stay in there. You keep your end of the contract so I don't have to deal with you also. Yes. It's like him with us. I'm sure he's feeling unhappy when we're not obeying. And we want him to stick it through with us. Thank you. Ooh, I love that. I'm going to say just in case the mic didn't pick it up because sometimes this mic don't. Sister Jeanette said he feels the same way with us because, we we'll say it again. <laughs> he's feeling unhappy with us because we're not obeying his commands. He's feeling unhappy with us because we're not obeying his commands. And want him to stick it with us we want, him to quit. we want him to stick it out with us and not quit on us boy we some selfish people 
because we don't want it to happen to us. But, you know, I can't take it anymore. I'm done. I'm at my limit. That's it. How much more do you expect me to take? And Father goes, take it all till it's done. Whatever that may mean. Death do us part. I remove them. Don't do it. It's about a covenant with him. You have to proceed and act a certain way in every aspect of your life according to the what? The instructions that you said you were in and with. Okay. Do not steal. That's the eighth one. Nine. You do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Ten. You do not covet your neighbor's wife, house, field, servant, animals, or anything belonging to your neighbor. Love is love one another as I have loved you. He, how did Yahusha love us? He gave it all. By laying, down his life. By laying down his life. He gave it all. He didn't hold back. Some of us want to hold back because we're scared. Because we've been hurt before. Well, I don't want to. Well, they don't deserve. Well, I don't particularly care for them. Well, if they're your brothers and sisters, that, that you in trouble just saying that. You can't love Elohim. If you said that, Yohanan, first Yohanan tells us that you can't love him unless you love those who you can see who's created in the similitude of Elohim. Now, you may not like how certain people act if it's not according to scripture. You may not like that, and rightfully so. You shouldn't like evil. In any form it takes. But you've got to love your brother and sister. Period. you got to be there for them. Period. It will be held against you. And it also shows that you are not humble. Because you have raised yourself above them. Yes. If you think about it. Because of what you just said. It me of it. <clears throat> the courts of today got... The Miranda writes from the scriptures. Anything you say or do will be held against you in the court of law. Can and will. <laughs> right? And that... Is, we can't get away from him. It's in our DNA. We cannot. So it's the same thing. Yahushua said every idle word that you say you will be judged for. That I tell you, every time I hear that scripture, it brings fear into me. Because I know sometimes my mouth moves and it's not pleasing the Father. Now, there's a remedy to that. Repentance. You, exactly. Repentance. Repent. Because he promises us that what we repent for. This is why you got to really examine yourself. Yeah. If you're lying to yourself, you may be in big trouble. Because you won't repent for what you don't believe you're wrong in. Then you can't be forgiven. So it's better for you to pour it all out on the altar and say, Father, I'm despicable. I'm wrong. I act and behave and believe these things that are not of you. Forgive me. And then, but you can't just say, forgive me. You got to what? Teshuva is to what? See, the, the, the Babylon teaches you this. Oh, just say you're sorry. And he'll forgive you. That's why he died on the, that's why he died for you. Teshuva is to stop and turn around and not to do again. So you have to change. There's a change that has to take place. Now, next week, two weeks. Oh, really? All right. Yeah, you're right. Two weeks. Um, the will of a priesthood and the earthly temple in comparison to the heavenly temple and the priesthood of Melchizedek. We're going to go through our Bream Hebrews chapter 9 and 10. So we're going to get a little more deeper into this. More. More, more, more. So I, I, I hope for those of you who have, who have made the decision. Now you, you've heard me minister this before. I'm going to say it again. Um, not all will be Melchizedek in that line. That doesn't mean you're not in the kingdom. This is an order, one of them, just like the uh, uh, cherubim or cherubim. That is an order, which you could be a part of. I don't know what the requirements are, 
based on what I've studied, it's an office that is held by spiritual beings. This is the office that's been presented to us. To be part of the bride class, the bride class has many names. It has being the bride, also the wife, also the you be in order of Melchizedek. Those are the things you will be if you choose to be in that. Now, you could choose not to live up to that and not be a part of that. That doesn't mean you're not in the kingdom. It even said certain people be least in the kingdom, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, you, you, you may, and I don't believe anybody's going to be that least because we, we teach that and you guys do that also. You tell men to obey the commandments and you follow them. You're trying your best to follow them yourself. But there is some other places for you if this is not what you're called to be. This is a very elite. That's why it's called the elect or the elite. Not everybody's going to be a Green Beret. Not everybody. What's the Navy one? Uh, um, not, Navy not everybody's going to be a Navy SEAL. They're still in the military. They're still in a Marine. Lots of Marines. How many are Navy SEAL? Um, what's it called again? Uh, let's see, Marine. The Marine. The Marine is the... Green Beret. No, Marines are not Green Beret. The Green, aren't Green Berets um, uh, Army? Army Rangers. Is the Army Rangers. Yeah, alright. What's the Navy? Everybody Navy, wants to see Navy, 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 Navy SEALs. Oh, Navy SEALs. I keep going Marine SEALs. I don't know why I won't say Marines. Excuse me. Excuse me. So, it's, it's, it's the, um, yeah, the Navy SEALs. Not every Navy person is a, what? Navy SEAL. But they're still in the Navy. They're all in the Navy. Just different sectors and parts with different. But who's the elite? The SEALs are. They, they, they are honored higher, but they also got some other work to do. They're trained differently, too. They go through what? More rigid training than the rest of them. So you have a choice to make. Where do you want to be? And if you want to be part of the, this order of Melchizedek, if you want to be the wife and the bride, then you are electing to go through some very strenuous stuff. Trials and tribulations that are going to be placed on you to get you to that level so you can handle that position. If you don't desire that, I don't think that's necessarily something to be frowned upon. It's just not for you. Or maybe you weren't designed to be there. But you're still in the kingdom. You still have to obey the Ten Commandments and all that. And maybe father won't put you through as much as others maybe that's why you see others go through stuff and maybe you wonder why you're going through stuff more than others well let's get a knowing let's get an understanding that's what we're here to do so you will have to make that choice make that choice wherever you are and do that to the best of your ability so that's going to be the end for right now to next uh until well until next week we'll see you and in two weeks we'll pick up again and continue with this i hope you uh have been eating this meal up i've been enjoying it myself because there's some things that have been uh brought to my attention that i didn't really understand or realize or got rid of this and you know anytime i get cleansed i like that oh get rid of that false thing from babylon and christianity and now i got what scripture really says oh i love that i live for that and i continue to want to grow in that when you deny it and you put it Yes. But aren't we yet chosen? Do we have a choice if we're chosen to walk this walk? Can we turn around and say, I don't want to do this? Well, that's actually in my last teaching in Hebrews. It says there are those who were chosen, those who were in this walk, and they chose to walk away from it. And it says it's impossible for them to come back. For those who have seen and tasted the truth, and they turn around, it is impossible for them to come back. So that's one aspect. That's Well, I'll talk to you later afterwards, but I'll, I'll go back and get the scripture for you because the scripture clearly shows, which I showed last week, that you could be in and you can be right back out. So once saved, always saved is what I believe you're expressing. And that is not true. You could choose not to be chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. And, and what, what it really says is, what it really means is this, because I used to be confused by that. 
Many are called, few are chosen. Many are, everybody is called, the whole world is called yeah. to be delivered. How many, how many really are going to be saved? How many are going to be delivered? A, a, remnant. Re, a remnant, a small amount. Yeah. Not many. But Father, it doesn't take, he doesn't take pleasure in that. So many are called, few choose not to take the calling. All of, uh, whole, all of mankind is called. He doesn't love me more than anybody else. So all of us have that ability and some majority of us are going to say no. So everybody's chosen. But they go, no, I don't want that. So we'll talk more about that later. Thank you for your question. And just hold on to it. We'll get deeper. I'll give you some scriptures on that. And that's another thing that has to be taken out. Once saved, always saved. No. You're in the running to be saved. And he has chosen, like I said, all of us. But any more questions, please email us. At the end of this service, you'll see um, uh, emails and phone number. A uh, phone number. I'm going to say phone numbers. Uh, and different media uh, outlets to be able to contact us. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this praise and thanksgiving after this good meal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I, guys hope, I hope you guys enjoyed that praise and thanksgiving. Um, there's a lot to Hebrews that you that we need to understand. We to, first and foremost is that it wasn't written to us. A, a lot of I mean the whole scriptures, everything from Genesis to Revelation, it wasn't written to us, but it was written for us. Uh, Hebrews in particular was written to the Hebrews in which uh, they were going through all, the period of time in which they didn't know what was going to end up happening if and when the temple got destroyed. So they need the clarification as far as, well, what do we do about sacrifice? What do we do about forgiveness? What do we do about... So the whole thing about Hebrews is, is clearing all that up. And to understand Melchizedek and, and how Yahushua became or yeah, came under the order of uh, Melchizedek and became a Melchizedek for us is very crucial in this walk. It, it, it's, I know that before coming to Torah, I didn't really pay attention to it. I knew that I didn't really understand it. I really didn't know anything about it, period. Uh, I I read Hebrews, and I was just like, oh, I'm a Hizadek, oh, and there was a, just a focus on uh, Hebrews 8 about, uh, um, what's it called, um, the sh direct quote from Jeremiah 31, and that's what they always focused on, but then again, they only focused on the New Covenant, not the fact that who it was written to and what was part of that renewed covenant so context 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 you can't just take that section everything deals with context so i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you guys uh were blessed with everything um did you pray over the offerings and the donations okay i don't i didn't remember it so i was just double checking okay well let's uh if you guys can Join me in prayer. Avina McCain, our Father King, Yuhua, we thank you so much for the Shabbat. We thank you for the teachings that you have been able to give us. Um, thank you for leading our brother to uh, these all these teachings about Hebrews, about Melchizedek, about uh, just everything that encompasses all these teachings. And thank you for uh, guiding him to uh, be able to teach us and that we can further our knowledge in what your word says further our knowledge in what uh, and how to apply it to us and where we are as far as a relationship with you father we just we thank you for uh this shabbat and being able to celebrate it with you and and being having you at the forefront of this shabbat uh, may we continue to fellowship with one another as we go to our designated places whatever it is that we go do uh go eat or whatever it may be Father, I just ask for Shavuot to have a good week ahead of us. May we see you in everything that we do. May we put you first and through everything that we do. Um, may we not... May we not uh, make anything that comes up in this week about us. May we be able to put you. May we be able to think about you. May we be able to uh, always see you in everything that we say that we do that we hear so father we thank you for this time we thank you you for uh just life we thank you for your love you 
you're great, you're marvelous, you're wonderful. Yes. We praise you, we glorify you, we, we thank you again. In Yahushua's name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, until next Shabbat. Shalom. Shalom. Yahuwah, we love you. Yahuwah, we need you. You are Yahuwah, we adore you. Yahuwah, we praise you. Your life don't make no sense No, no Without you we ain't got no